Uh, really, really good play, really good pick at first. Cool Care Heating, Air, Plumbing, and Refrigeration is proud to be Gamecock Baseball's official review sponsor this season. Schedule an official review of your HVAC unit and plumbing system with Cool Care for the warmer months coming up. Our Sandlapper cleaning first inning continues here as the Gamecocks will come to bat for their first time at the plate. Will McGillis, Braylon Wimmer, and Caleb Denny. Last night, Carolina, seven hits, and they were all just singles. In the first three innings of the ball game, South Carolina only had one base runner. That was an Ethan Petrie single. While the Tigers were racking up some um, hits and some runs, hit the ball really hard, especially early in that ball game. And, and late in the game, Abrams, who is our number eight hitter for Clemson today, the DH, he pinch hit an absolute monster over everything in right field. And that was kind of the exclamation point there, Stuart, that uh, kind of – Told it, uh, told the uh, fans what the Tigers were in business for. Yeah, it certainly was. I'm gonna hit you real quick, Tommy, with a little scouting report. Tristan Smith on the mound today, the freshman left-hander, Bowling Springs High School, right here in South Carolina. Uh, kind of thinking 91-94. I've seen him a little better. I know Diamond Prospects and different people had him up to 96 before. More of a fastball slider guy. He's gonna do that cross-fire delivery. So kind of steps towards first, comes back across, but. This guy's a special guy on the mound here, was Gatorade Player of the Year in South Carolina, and just it's really exciting to see how he'll handle this mm -hmm. moment, but this is a good arm the Gamecocks get here on day two. Will McGillis, first pitch is in there for a strike at 91, and McGillis last night, tough night, a size five collar, 0 for 5 with two strikeouts. I'm sure he wants to atone today. Right-handed batter up close to the plate, and that pitch is down low. Yeah, and Will went into that leadoff role early in the week, led off with the home run, so you kind of leave yeah. him there if you're king, and I don't blame him. But see if his at-bats today, a little more quality at-bat than trying to do so much in the leadoff role. Pitch on the way. Is in there for a strike. Looks like a straight change at 87. Well, that was the thing that really never mentioned the change much on scout report, but he has one. As Coach said, well, sort of. So but if well sort of is working, he's really tough. The pitch. And he almost hit him in the leg. So that one back to the backstop. Tigers have the shift. Second baseman about 10 feet to the shortstop side of the bag. Out at the cutout. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So a good start as well for Tiger freshman left-hander Tristan Smith. Yeah, he's, he's one of those left-handed pitchers we say it a lot in baseball. Don't let him settle in because when he does, as we said, more of a fastball slider, but we've already seen the changeup is in, in that arsenal, and that's really tough. He'll throw it against the lefty and the righty. Braylon Wimmer, first pitch. That was outside, but Braylon couldn't hold back. He tried to late in his swing there. but So a gift there for the left-hander. Wimmer 0 for 4 last night. He's had some good days and nights in this ballpark before. Pitch on the way. Outside corner, foul back. So good location there. And Smith ahead 0-2. Yeah, kind of a different type shift. Caden Grice, the first baseman, way off the line, but almost have a hard time getting back. In fact, if it's a quick hitter and second base moves more into shallow center. The pitch. Foul back right above our heads. That one at 93. Yeah, we joked on the gun on Noah, but if it's juiced up, it's juiced up on both because 
he's come out in that 93. He's been pretty consistent on his fastball as well. I'm anxious to see how the Gamecock left-handed batters deal with this guy. Wimmer waits. Here it comes. There's a drive into left center field. It's going to be caught on the run. That's good closing speed out there uh, from the Tigers' left fielder. That is uh, Irmo's Will Taylor. When it left the bat from our angle, I thought it was going to fall in there, but he made up ground in a hurry. I did, too. Will Taylor is a Dutch Fort guy, and I got to see him a bunch over the years. Probably one of the fastest high school players I've ever got to see in person. Wow. Came, obviously, a Clemson uh, football guy, two-way guy, just a special athlete. He closed on that one. Here is one of those left-handed batters, Caleb Denny. He takes a breaking ball down low. Denny in last night's game, one for four. Owasso, Oklahoma. Two homers, 18 runs driven in. Comes in at 4-10. The 1-0 is down low. Uh, and like I said earlier, you get to play shallow here and left, and then you got Will Taylor's speed. Off the bat, Wimmer's ball, to me, looked like it was clearly going to get in the gap, at least for a single. Yeah, I thought so. But he gets to play so much more in the alley here with the shorter left field. Pitch on the way. Way up high, almost to the backstop. So 3-0. 310 down the left field line to that monster down there. 420 way out at the point in center field like Fenway Park. And do, they do not have the dimensions in right. There's a breaking ball in there for a strike. So he, he didn't give in with a fastball there. No, and it's amazing. Sometimes, too, left-handed pitchers aren't used to throwing the left-handed hitter. So takes a few pitches for Tristan to settle in to get that first strike. Pitch on the way. Is down low for ball four. Two out walk. So the Gamecocks have the first base runner of the game. And here's Cole Messina, the catcher. Boy, Cole heard it from the Tiger fans last night, didn't he, Coach? He certainly did. And just, you know, it's one of those I, I know he would say right now, it hit me, but it was yeah. you just couldn't overturn it. And, yeah, I, and, and I think uh, the Clemson players who were complaining about the same thing, whether it hit them on the leg or the foot, I believe all of them because of the way they reacted when it happened. But if you can't video evidence, then you can't call it. Yeah, and, and, I, and that's what you have to do. I mean, it was, it was tough because he was so <laughs> – he was 100% balled in. He took everything off, and it was slowed the game down. So, and that crowd was ready to yell at someone anyway. He became that guy. Right-handed batter, open stance, back of the box, and in there for a strike at 93. Now, Smith showed his first move to first with just a step off. So not really known for a move at first, you know, as far as going over, but we'll step off and very athletic. Pitch is on the outside corner. Change up at 83, quickly 0-2. I ask a few scouts, who do you compare him to athletically? They quickly said Mahoney for you guys, South Carolina. But Tristan also hit 10 home runs his senior year of high school. So Pick just off like move Mahoney. to first, just a kind of a token throw to first base. With that 0 for 4 last night, that means that the first four in the order for Carolina, 1 for 17 against Tiger pitching last night. Pitch on the way. Right in there for a strike. Nothing wrong with that pitch. Inner half at 92. So the Gamecocks get a two-out walk. It leads to nothing here in the first. We've played one here at Floor Field in Greenville, South Carolina. And South Carolina and Clemson are all tied at no runs apiece. We're back after this from San Lapper Cleaning and Services.
Corner Pantry brings you home runs for scholarships. For every Gamecock home run, Corner Pantry will donate $50 to the General Scholarship Fund of the USC Athletics Department. Corner Pantry, download the Corner Pantry app to save at the pump and in the store. Well, before our game today, our ceremonial first pitches were thrown by one of the greatest football players in the history of the South Carolina Clemson rivalry, C.J. Spiller, and Gamecock head football coach Shane Beamer. Boy, they both got loud ovations, didn't they? They certainly did. It was fun to see both of those. Both of them have meant a lot to both programs. And Coach Beamer, he, I never saw him even warm up and came out I didn't for a either. strike. So that's pretty impressive. I saw C.J. Spiller at least toss a few. I wouldn't even got it there if I hadn't thrown any. <laughs> and then I might not get it there. I have to throw my knuckleball. Yeah. <laughs> Scoot up some to do it. Cam Canarella from Hartsville, the freshman, 459 on the year. No homers and eight runs batted in. <clears throat> Well, home plate Greg, plate umpire Greg Street has made it clear he will call strike three of our three of the first six outs of this game have been called strikes. So I'm sure they'll be swinging a little more here. Canarella a little bit different than a lot of hitters you see today. Has a pitch a little bit outside at 93. He is up in the front of that box with a slightly open stance from the left side. Very slightly open. Yeah, he has the looks of a leadoff hitter when you kind of watch him and what he does, but Boy, he's done a great job for them in the middle of their lineup. Change up is down low. Canarella in last night's game. He had a night. Three hits and four trips with a run batted in. Had a couple of doubles. There's a shot. Speared by McGillis at first. He throws. That's a nice play. The throw was what was really good. He did a good job getting it in the webbing of his glove going to his left, but Boy, when you do a 360 and throw a strike like that, that's, that's a very nice play by Will McGillis, Carolina's second baseman. Benjamin Blackwell now batting fifth in the order of the shortstop. Blackwell at 375, no homers, nine driven in, a senior out of Fairfax, Virginia. Last night 0 for 3, but he drove in a run. Yeah, and Gavin Cassis makes you feel good too when you know you're throwing over to a guy with his height. There's a bouncer up the middle. Nobody's going to get that one. Not hit very hard, but the perfect spot. Almost hit the second base bag. So there is the first hit of our ball game as Blackwell goes after the first pitch. Yeah, that was a hit them where they ain't kind of ground ball because you just hit one as hard as you can if you can, Camarello, and McGillis did that play, and then that one rolls through. Will Taylor up there, the left fielder, made that nice running catch back in the bottom of the first. Taylor 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts last night. So Dutch Fork at one time had Will Taylor, Evan Stone out there running around their outfield. There wasn't a lot of balls dropping back in those days. There's a, looks like the slider outside at 87. Blackwell, nine stolen bases in 12 attempts. So we've got to keep an eye on him. Yeah, Cole threw our first run out of the year last year. A really good throw last night. Throw over. Oh, I believe he got him, and he did get him. He has picked off. Well, they kept him close, all right. So good job, Noah Hall. Well, they're going to review. Picking we'll off Blackwell. Did you get a look at that? Uh, uh, you know, we did. I, it's one of those going to be close. Real, and honestly, the base runner didn't ask for the review. Coach I know. Backish did. So The base runner was, looked like he yeah, was going back to so the dugout. I'm, kinda, <laughs> I'm going with body language on that one. But we'll see. We'll get the video of it. And, the oven mitt may, you know, lead to a little bit, but he certainly had him breaking. Man, that was close. Hope cool Care a... official review for Gamecock Baseball. The official review is brought to you by Cool Care Heating, Air, Plumbing, and Refrigeration. Don't waste time batting around with the other guys. Visit CoolCareHVAC.com to schedule an appointment today. So we will see. Man, that was close. Yeah. But I'm like you. He got up and he was going to. He didn't act like he was upset about the call. Yeah, you kind of go with body language, and again, he popped right up, and, you know, Blackwell did, and, and then he saw his coach doing the, you know, the let's look at it sign that we all know now to two hands, and this angle is just, I couldn't imagine you'd overturn it with the angle we've seen. Get the slow motion replay now. <laughs> That's close, isn't it? Yes, it is. I don't know if I could call that one one way or the other. But uh, which makes it hard to overturn, of course. Yeah, and as an umpire, too, you see him break. He certainly fooled him. You saw Blackwell 
go, oh my goodness, I gotta get back. So as an umpire, you see that too. And then when it's that close, I, maybe well, I, the hand snuck in with the big, I call it the oven mitt, but whatever those sliding guards are. And, Stuart, you a Clint Black fan? That's some good music there in the background. <laughs> we'll kill in time and guess that's what we're doing right now as we wait for these umpires with this review. We are scoreless. Top of the second inning. Tigers may have two outs, or they may have a runner at first <laughs> with one out. And if he is called safe, you and I are both saw black wool. He <laughs> is new, man. He picked me off. Mm. The second inning brought to you by Safe Federal Credit Union. Safe Family Values. Forward Vision. Visit safefed.org to learn more. And for the reviews, Tommy, the umpires have to go way down the first baseline heading back to the clubhouse. So it's not an easy in the dugout review for the umpires. It's it's probably about 200 yards from home plate that they have to go to do it underneath. Got a note from my good friend Teddy who lets me know that this dimension, he is out, so they do not overturn the call. The dimension's down the, the right field line, 302 feet. They don't have it marked on the wall out there. So it's a big pickoff move after a single up the middle by Blackwell. Well, we talked last night, said Cole Messina threw his first runner out. You want to throw runners out? Hold them the way we've been holding in the last few games. Yeah. And that, that gives you that extra step. There's a swing and a miss. Tried to check his swing. Actually ruled a foul tip by Greg Street. Mark Winters down at first base. Javero. January is at second, and Adam Dowdy, last night's home plate guy, is over at third. Right-hand batter waits, and here it comes. Slider is outside. Two so balls right, and a strike. So right now on our scoreboard using that velocity, Noah's 95-97, and then that changeup is 80-83. to That is a huge <laughs> difference for the hitters. Taylor at 238 with a homer five driven in. The pitch, swing and a miss. 96 on the gun. So two balls, two strikes, two out for the Tigers. Taylor's a guy infield-wise, come and get the ball. One of the best runners we'll see this season when he gets going. Change up is down low, and he's gone full. And a little bit harder change up on that one, 86. It had been around that 81, 83, so threw that one a little bit harder, and what Taylor did a nice job laying off. Don't want to walk him after picking one off. Pitch on the way is high and outside for ball four. So Taylor gets the free pass. It'll bring up Chad Ferry, the right fielder. 3-0-3, no homers, four driven in, the junior out of Greenwood. Ferry one for four with a run scored last night. He struck out three times. And again, I would typically say two outs and a guy like Will Taylor on first expecting to run, and he still may, but after such a good pickoff move by Noah Hall, you coach back, it's you kind of at least letting a few pitches go by probably first. Swing and a miss. 96 up with the fastball there. Left-handed batter. Stretch, pretty good lead off first. Pitch on the way. Foul out of play. Quickly 0-2. And we go on our shift with Lee Croy moving kind of behind the bag. Um, McGillis already probably about five or six feet into the grass at second and shifted over. So still expecting maybe a pull since we throw so many change-ups here with Noah Hall. Very shallow in left field out there for the Gamecocks is Denny. Pitch on the way. Is chopped to short. Wimmer's going to have it. He's going to run to the bag for out number three. So a... Six unassisted there for the third out of the half inning here. Clemson, no runs, one hit, no errors, and they stranded one. We've played one and a half here in Greenville, and it's Clemson nothing and Carolina nothing. Okay, so that would be... Support of college baseball in South Carolina and 
And don't forget to stop by the Drive Team Store, the third base stand, or the first base kiosk to get your Lady River Rivalry merchandise items today. Founders Federal Credit Union proudly sponsors Gamecock Baseball. Take advantage of their all-star lineup of financial products and services by becoming a member. Visit RelaxJoinFounders.com today to apply for membership. Gamecock's going to send up Petri, Cassis, and LeCroy, 5, 6, and 7 in the order here in the second, to face the tough freshman lefty, Tristan Smith. Petri last night had a couple of base hits for Carolina, two of their seven singles. Talented freshman from Land Lakes, Florida. Yeah, this is this is one of those matchups you kind of get excited to think you get for three years. Yeah, because really. This is really two of the two of the best college, high school players in the country last year, and here they are getting to face each other. First pitch from Smith is a fastball way outside. Petri, 467 with five homers and 13 driven in. And Petri's fell, just gotten comfortable now. Played first last night. We've seen him at third, right field. That one's down low at 92. Petri, one of three Gamecocks with five home runs this season. And as the saying goes, Tommy, if you can hit, they find somewhere for you to play, and that's what he does. But he's done really well on defense with it, too. Almost hit him with that. I don't know how he got out of the way of that one. So it's back to the screen and quickly 3-0 and on the freshman. Tell you something we did see. When it hits his backstop, it comes back fast because that ball almost made it back to the, to the grass quickly. His umpire, Greg Street, had to run get it. Pitch on the way is outside for ball four at 94 miles per hour. So a four-pitch walk. So a strikeout on three pitches followed by a walk on four pitches. Yep, and take those. And with the walk earlier, that's their 70th walk of the year for the Gamecocks. And that brings out a, a visit already from a pitching coach, which you don't see a ton, but Jimmy Bellinger, Saw something he wanted to come out and say already. Mm -hmm. It's another TM Floyd & Company consultation. Their website is full of valuable information, including blogs to help you with your resume, LinkedIn profile, and enhancing your brand. Read more on their insights page on tmfloyd.com. Tommy, something cool when you look at Clemson's rosters, uh, head coach Eric Backage, uh, assistant coach Nick Snobble, both number 23. And I was telling you, they're both East, Car yeah. East Carolina grads. And if you know anything about East Carolina baseball, Coach Keith LeClaire and, and those guys, I just think it's so cool how they honor him still, so many of their guys. Tells you what an impact he had, and, and we see the impact still with that East Carolina program. So here is Cassis, so a lefty-lefty matchup. Medium lead off first. The pitch is in there for a strike at 90. Cassis, another one of those Gamecocks with five homers. He's driven in 13, just like Petri. 3-12 on the season. Last night 0 for 2, but he scored two runs. He walked twice. Pitch is in the dirt. Nice stop there by Cooper Engel. Yeah, not really expecting Petri to run. Maybe you, you do. You're not. It's a left-handed pitcher, left-handed hitter, so not a real sit, hit and run situation either, so... You just want to be ready for that ball getting away, maybe. Outside corner at the knees. I don't think Cassis thought much of that call. Again, our second inning brought to you by Safe Federal Credit Union. Caden Grice at first probably agreed with him on that one, too, because he was really upset. Left-handed hitters, and that seems to be the strike away that he calls. One-two pitch is low and away. Runner at first with nobody out for Carolina. I know Coach Kingston mentioned Greenville and y'all's opening, but it just seems to always get better when you come back here to floor field yeah. what they've done. Almost a wild pickoff throw there. 
not only with this West End area, but just seems like the whole city of Greenville continues to Oh, yeah. Boy, the last 20, 25 years, this place is just, it's just a dynamite place to visit now and, and I'm sure live as well. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch on the way. Strike three call on the outside corner. And then, now Cassis points to the outside. He disagreed with that one, and I think he heard about that a word or two from Greg Street as he was walking back to the Carolina dugout. That's a big strikeout after a leadoff walk, Coach. It's a big one. And you just, if nothing else, you're hoping there left on left, you advance the runner because Petrie's not a real base stealer. But as I said already, that's the fourth call strike. So these guys need to figure out Greg Street is not going to quit calling strike three because you don't like it. And you need to be ready to hit it. Tal LeCroy fouls one back and out of play. Last night, Tal went two for three and drove in a run. Final last night was 5-2 Tigers. They out hit Carolina 9-7. Clemson batters struck out 13 times in that game, and they committed four errors on defense, and they still won the game 5-2. Yeah, you read that box score, you'd have kind of scratched your head after those numbers. Swing and a miss at a high fastball at 91. So quickly 0-2 on Tal. Belton, South Carolina, of course, the nephew of Clemson Hall of Famer Matthew LeCroy, major leaguer for many years, now manager. Triple A, I believe, with the Nationals this year, Matthew is. Fastball high at 94. And they've gone, they shift a lot they right are, now. Yeah. I mean, it's probably more than I've seen this year with some teams, with two strikes especially. They go pull. And they are really shading him to the right side in the outfield. The left side on the infield, the right side to the outfield. There's a shot foul past Scott Wingo coaching third base. Yeah. I now, was, that is drastic in the outfield, bro. It brother. was. I was kind of locked in on how much the infield went pull. And then to look up and see it so much. I mean, it is a take away any type little two-strike bloop down that right field line where they're playing. Center is still fairly deep, thinking it's 420 in that corner. If Tal could pull one down the left field line, scoring from first base would be Petri. Here's a stretch. Pitch on the way. Looks like he was trying to drive that one the other way. It was on the outer half. Fouls it back into the screen. Right-handed batter being Lee Croy. Yeah, and if you start this time of year, you're starting to get enough at bats. You feel kind of comfortable to do these type defensive alignments. But you're right. If he hooks one down this third base line, be an interesting decision for Coach Wingo at third. The stretch. Pitch on the way. He's going. Swing and a miss. Throw down is into center field, and Petri is going to take off for third base. So a Tommy, strike out of the hitter. We've got, but we've an got an interference, don't we? We sure do. And he's got to call it. He fell completely across the plate. Ugh. So that will retire the side then. Yeah, tough break. No, that's right. They send him back to first base. No, that was That's what Greg down. Street did anyway. It was strike three. Yeah. It's, Greg got confused just on the count. Yeah. That's the third out. All right. So the Gamecocks, a leadoff walk turns out to be uh, nothing on the scoreboard. We've played two. It's Clemson nothing and the Gamecocks nothing. And we're back after this from Safe Federal Credit Union. Daily disposable contacts, the best choice for eye health and the ultimate inconvenience. Put them in in the morning, take them out at bedtime, and throw them away. Call for our free trial pair and have a bright, clear Sansbury day. Noah Hall taking his warm-up tosses. Gamecocks 
Stewart have already struck out four times against this freshman left-hander. So he's had their number, no hits for Carolina. And after seven singles last night, they need to, they need to rally and start scoring some runs because for the last five Carolina-Clemson baseball games, Clemson has won them, and they've held Carolina to two runs in every single one of those games. So Gamecock's got to get busy on offense. Yeah, and I told you, Tristan Smith's not a guy you want to let settle in, but I love what South Carolina did. They got picture in motion right there, and I know Tal Ecroy's mad at himself. But if he can hold off on falling across the plate, you got a runner on third right there That's with right. two outs. And then that slider is kind of taken away, but – yeah, if, Big play. If the throw is still bad, because yes, it might yes. not have been bad. But, yeah. Exactly. And mm. that's why, as I said, Greg had to call that. It's no longer yeah. where it's got to be contact. But it was a clear call that he got, and he got it right. All right, here's the DH, Gavin Abrams, batting eighth in the order. And I mentioned in the pregame, this boy absolutely clobbered one at Doug Kingsborough last night. One of the longest home runs I've seen hit there. St. John's, Florida, sophomore. And limited at bats, but boy, he's taking advantage of them. Triple home run, as long a home run as I've seen all season. There's a shot up the middle, and nice play by Petrie. Did he get him? He got him. Uh, are we going to have a protest here? Uh, don't think so. I'm telling you what, that's one of the best plays I've seen by a second baseman this year, if not the best. McGillis went back, ranging toward the bag at the cutout, and out in the grass, he gloved it and somehow got enough on the throw. That is something that deserves a blue star right there. Yeah, fantastic play. Coach Backage kind of came out, looked over his first base coach, Griffin Mazur, and I think he just kind of said, I don't know. He don't want to go to the well again on replay. No. And Man, what a play. Yeah, fantastic play. Here's Riley Bertram. Takes one in there for a strike at 92, batting ninth in the order out of Zionsville, Indiana. He's a senior, came with Coach Backage from Michigan. Off the bat, I didn't think he'd have a chance Me on either. that play. Just missed the inside corner. Clemson's got five left-handed hitters in there. So, again, Noah's change up as an equalizer to them. But these left-handed hitters, they swing early in these counts. One ball, one strike. Here it comes. Change up is hit in the gap in left center field. Going over in a hurry is Denny. He makes a nice running catch. It looked like uh, Evan Stone, the center fielder, was he diving to get out of the way or was he driving to try to catch the ball? Could you tell? <laughs> I couldn't really tell, but I don't know if I've ever seen the guy who's not catching the ball dive. Yeah, he's diving uh, to try to catch the ball, but he was cut in front of by Denny. That's a nice play by Denny and great effort by Evan Stone. So two outs, top of the order, Cooper Engel, the catcher, struck out back in the first. Well, again, we both mentioned that here at Floor Field, it's like Fenway Park, so the left fielder is just, he's probably 20 feet more in the gap than you are in a normal outfield, so. It's funny, Evan didn't think he was going to be there, but glad he caught it running instead of making him dive. Slider down low to Engel. Pitch is, I guess, low again on the changeup. So two balls, no strikes. Well, it really hasn't given the inside pitch to these guys. He has given the outside fastball to both pitchers. Pitch on the way. Outside corner for a strike at 96. And as a hitter. He's painting a black at 96. You're wanting to complain because you're not hitting it. This is our contract construction. Third inning. Pitch on the way. There's a bouncer. Going to have to be backhanded again by McGillis. And did he get him again? He did. Another great play. That time he had a little trouble getting out of his glove. But two really, really strong plays by McGillis. And now we're going to have a review of that one. So no review on the spectacular play. That one not quite as sterling, but still a great play. And this official review is brought to you by Cool Care Heating, Air, Plumbing, and Refrigeration. Call the pros at Cool Care to take an official review of your HVAC and plumbing needs. Well, Stuart Gamecox, um, we talked about uh, the, the base hits few and far between seven singles in this series. And they batted 11 times and four strikeouts already today. So Clemson pitching has been the story of this series so far. So far it has, but Gamecock's doing today what they need to do with Noah on the mound, and McGillis kind of single-handedly doing it. But you just you got to kind of keep it on the tracks until your offense can get you some runs because it's really, really hard to think you're going to keep working through that. I think we're going to get blocked. 
Well, I, the, <laughs> the camera's right behind the first base coach there. He signaled safe. I thought he might have got him by about an inch or two. We'll watch it again. Yeah, he had trouble unloading that one. I'm not so sure now. Tigers might win that one. You I mentioned cannot. Contract Construction, sponsor of our third inning. Some of their projects include the Gamecocks Founders Park Baseball Stadium, Williams Rice Stadium Plaza upgrades, the Long Family Football Operations Facility, and the Columbia Firefly Stadium. Learn more about our team and view our portfolio at contractconstruction.net. Well, when I looked at it from the other angle, yeah. I kind of thought, thought he might have beat it out there. Yeah, Mark Winters, he's, he's had some bang-bang plays here already. And this one you got to keep watching to see if he is. So, I mean, you just don't know if they're going to overturn something that you and I have looked at this many times. I mean, I must think you got to stay with your call. And he took that lunge. Ingle kind of did what you uh -huh. you try to tell him not to do. You try to tell him run through the base. But he took that lunge that sometimes slows you down and it also holds you a little bit in the air. I believe he's – I've been wrong many times on these, of course, but I think he's <laughs> safe. We shall see in a second. So far, Gamecocks, no runs, no hits, no errors. They're two times at the plate. This will retire the side if they do rule him out. Tigers have the only hit of this ball game. It came off the bat of Blackwell, but he got picked off first base. Tell you what, whichever they call, McGillis has been a, a big factor defensively at second base already mm -hmm. in this game. You, have, you know, it must be pretty close if they're still in there looking at it. Yeah. Huge crowd here in Greenville. Tickets split right down the middle. And he is out. I'm glad I was wrong about that one. <laughs> so another great play by Will McGillis, the transfer from southern Mississippi. So as it turns out, three up and three down. We have played two and a half here at Floor Field on the west end of Greenville, and it's Clemson nothing and Carolina nothing. The Certified South Carolina program helps South Carolinians find and buy locally sourced food from farmers. To find South Carolina-grown products, including local farms, visit CertifiedSC.com. That's CertifiedSC.com. The Gamecocks decked out in their home white uniform with the black pinstripes, black trim. Clemson in their purple tops with the orange trim and the white pants with their purple caps and the Gamecocks with their black caps. So a long time in between inning as Cooper Engel had to go in there and get the equipment on in the dugout. It'll be Horning, Stone, and McGillis for Carolina. Gamecocks, only, uh, only two base runners walked. Denny walked with two out, and then a leadoff walk by Petrie in the second inning. Still nothing on the scoreboard, and still only seven singles in this series. Carson Horning, last night, one for three, hit another ball really hard. He did drive in a run. Got a homer and six runs batted in for the season. Lefty-lefty matchup, and he almost hit him with that one. Tommy just texted my expert on this, Kent Reichert, our SID yeah. for South Carolina. And we've been wrong a lot, Kent and I have. We're mm -hmm. both Browns fans, so 
but <laughs> pitch is low. We, we both think Clemson has used both of their reviews that you're allowed through the game mm-hmm. unless the umpire decides it needs right. to be reviewed. So mm-hmm. kind of used both of them early. That's a good point. Which is odd to see a lot. 2-0 pitch is on the outside corner at 92. So two balls and a strike. Carson Horning, who's Granddad played football with Gail Sayers. Carson's from Overland Park, Kansas. He's a sophomore. In there for a strike. Well, Tristan, that fastball is in the zone, which makes that slider and that change that he will throw when needed. The 2-2 jammed him that time. That one might have been inside a little bit, but not taking a chance. Horning fouls it off down at his feet. Carolina's only hard hit ball was caught out there in the left center off the bat of Braylon Wimmer. Swing and a miss. Blew it by him at 92. So another strikeout of a Gamecock batter. That's five. 12 in the series. Yeah, you let, me, let me correct that. Okay. Only six strikeouts last night. I was thinking it was seven. So 11 in the series. Here's Stone. See if he might drop one down. He's been in a funk lately. Pitch takes a strike. He's been doing a lot of that during this slump over the last 10 days or so. Yeah, you've mentioned it so many times. It feels like the count's 0-1, 0-2 when he walks to the mm-hmm. plate. And, and it's really hard. A guy with a good slider. There's a pop-up in the short right field area. Good speed getting to that ball by Ferry because he hit it against the shift where – the second baseman had no chance. He didn't like to, to catch up with it, but two quick outs for the Gamecocks, and here's top of the order, Will McGillis. Yeah, Chad Fair, Greenwood High School guy. He made that look easy, I thought, right off the bat. Had a chance to maybe fall in, and that's what you would want if you're having that kind of – it's amazing how those type could get you going again. Uh-huh. McGillis struck out leading off the bottom of the first. Pitch right off the end of the bat, squibbed over towards the Gamecock dugout on the first base side. That's kind of last night how the game ended on the squibber to first. And you're going to see a lot of change-ups. They know Will can hit the fastball. He's a veteran guy. Showed it at Southern Miss and showed it here at South Carolina. That one's down low at 92 and back to the screen. McGillis came into last night's game at 333. But he is 0 for 6 in this series. Pitch on the way. Foul back over our heads. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, this is a fun series. A few years ago, we started to get some, when the grad transfer rule came in, we had Dallas Beaver, we had Bryant Bowen. Those guys came in and embraced this series right away, and that's what Will McGillis has done and all their other transfers. And I'm t- There's no more fun weekend than this series, and I know those guys have done it, and these guys will too. Freshman fastball way outside. So two balls and two strikes, trying to keep the inning alive for Braylon Wimmer. There's a wind-up, and the right-handed batter waits, and here it comes. There's a drive towards deep center field. Going back there is Camarella, and he makes a catch up against the wall. So Cam Camarella, the freshman out of Hartsville, got a good jump on that one. Had him played perfectly. He just had to go straight back to the wall, didn't have to go left or right. So a nice play and a... Well hit ball by McGillis. So three up and three down for Carolina here in the third. So three in the books from Greenville. It's still Clemson nothing and the Gamecocks nothing. We're back after this from Columbia Metro Airport.
Enjoy the great outdoors powered by a tradition of strength. The Ford Bronco SUV, built wild. To find great offers and learn more about Bronco and Bronco Sport, go to buyfordnow.com and visit your Carolina Ford dealer, official partner of Gamecock Athletics. We'll have our Carolina Ford dealers locker room show after this game. First batter up for the Tigers is going to be Caden Grice, the first baseman strikeout victim in the first inning. And Grice has has struck out four times in this series already, but, boy, he is he's like a time bomb waiting to explode. We know what he's capable of. Yeah, I told you. I remember years ago at a showcase, I saw him hit some of the longest home runs, Justin Smoke-type home runs, mm-hmm. and it's in there for sure. Noah Hall, pitch on the way. Here's a changeup down low. Tommy, I got a great text. I got to share this one. This is why South Carolina baseball, the state of South Carolina, is so great. Chad Ferry went to 96 high school, not Greenwood mm-hmm. High School. Yep. So I want to clear that up because they are some of the best high school baseball coaches all over our state. You and better I, believe I it. I certainly want them all to get their credit. So. Pitches outside, 2-0. and a. I think Alex Beatonball helping me out on that one. But it is Greenwood County, so I got the county mm-hmm. right. There's a changeup. It's low, and it's 3-0. and o. Don't want to walk the leadoff batter. Yeah, Bill Voizel, former major leaguer, no longer with us, but Bill Voizel from 96 South Carolina. But he was born in Greenwood. Of course, he wore 96 when he pitched uh, for the Braves and a couple of other teams in the major leagues. The pitch, outside corner at 96. So Hall trying to come back from being way down in the count here. Bill Voizel was on the staff with Johnny Sane and Warren Spahn, late 40s with the Boston Braves. Spahn and Sane and pray for rain. Well, don't forget about Bill Voizel from 96 South Carolina. There's a foul ball off to the left side above the Tigers' dugout. Yeah, it is. I I grew up in this state, obviously, and I just love the high school baseball. See how many South Carolina kids are in this. I know how much this means to all of us when these two. You better believe it. Hall with that red glove. Pitches. Swing and a miss. He struck him out at 94. So the count was 3-0, and and he came back and got him. So two strikeouts now for Grice here in this game, and here's Blake Wright. Blake Wright plays third base. He is a junior. Yeah, Caden Grice, not a guy you want to have to do that too often to put him in those hitter counts. Mm-hmm. Great job by Noah to get him come all the way back. Wright is a right-handed batter. There's a shot down the left field line. Fielded nicely by Lee Croy over the bag there. Boy, that could have been tricky. It almost hit the bag. Very nice backhand play by the sophomore from Belton, Tal Lee Croy. Such a hard play to stay down on because I was expecting it to hit the bag. It's like it was didn't take a hop to right at it and great job. And then to make such a strong throw, not even close on the play at first. Here's Canarella, center fielder. Retired on what may have been the play of the series his last time up by McGillis at second base. There's a pitch that's a changeup for a ball. Two outs for Clemson here in the fourth. We are scoreless. The 1-0 pitch is slapped foul down the left side. Looks like it's going to clear the seats down there. I mean, there is, there's a fanny in every nook and cranny, <laughs> folks. Yeah, there. A lot of people here. They call it the family tears. We call the berm is filled up. Chopper to Wimmer. He's got it on two big hops. Throws him out by a step. Three up and three down. Neatly done by Noah Hall. So the Tigers done in their half of the fourth. Three and a half from floor field. Clemson nothing and Carolina nothing.
Hey, Gamecock fans, when's the last time you were in your crawl space? A moldy and wet crawl space affects both your home and your family's health. For free inspection and quote, go to GamecockCrawlspace.com. Well, the freshman left-hander is, has put on a show so far. Coach? Yeah, it's exactly what I told you earlier. I, we all knew from guys that have seen him before, if he settles in, which he's kind of about at that point he's doing, he can be really tough on left and right-handed hitters. And right now it's one of those innings. Noah Hall is giving you exactly what you had said at the beginning, a chance to kind of settle in, catch your breath. You're the home team today. Offense needs to respond a little bit because Tristan has kind of had their numbers so far with all the strikeouts. Braylon Wimmer up there had the hardest hit ball by a Carolina player in this game. We both thought it was going to drop in left center, but a nice running catch out there by Taylor. There's a fastball. He challenged him down the middle there, and Wimmer fouls it back. Yeah, I think if we're playing at either other park, it was a hit, but this field allows you to do it. Now, Will Taylor has really elite speed, too, mm -hmm. so that's a big part of why he could close on that. Wimmer fouls one off to the right side this time, and quickly, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, and, and Canarello kind of just keeps moving around in center. He was pull, now he's kind of straight. That that right center, that 420, boy, that ball can go out there and get lost. 0-2 pitch is high and outside. Tristan Smith from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. Clemson's expanded roster, we, we touched on this in last night's broadcast, expanded roster of 45 players, 29 from the Palmetto State. Wimmer waits. Pitch on the way. Just missed the inside corner. 92 on his 48th pitch of the game. So, I mean, he's, he's right there staying loose, and that's what you want. <laughs> Almost the same Noah Hall was 47 as that inning ended. Hmm. Pitch on the way. There's a line drive into right field for the base hit. So, first hit for the Gamecocks comes in the fourth inning, and it's the leadoff variety. So, let's see what Denny, Messina, and Petrie can do to bring him around. Well, good job right there by Wimmer. Two strikes, and you've kind of you know, obviously been a lot of swings and misses up this point. He just stayed right on that ball and drove it with authority to right field. Pitcher's duel here in Greenville. Denny walked his first time up. There's a bouncer to second. Could be two. To short for one on the first double play. And Wimmer's a guy, you, he's seven for seven, but it's so hard to start the runner right there. And, you know, and you can't blame Denny. He hit that ball right on the screws, but right at the second baseman. So, man, tough break for the offense. And Tristan Smith, that's how you keep your pitch count down to stay in this game. You better believe it. Here's Cole Messina struck out back in the first. Cole can hit a ball a long way. But in this series, he is 0 for 5. A couple of strikeouts. There's a shot into right center field. See if he can get two out of this. He's got good speed for a catcher. He is going to try it with two outs, and he is going to get in there. A sliding double. That's a good job of taking that pitch the other way, just like Wimmer did. Yeah, really good job. And that's as you get your second time through a lineup, you start to see it. But I don't know if we got two better running catchers in the country in a game than yeah, how about what we that? got here today. Obviously, with Engel leadoff guy, but Messina, too, kind of. You know, as they say for bigger guys, he's deceivingly fast. He's just a good base runner. He's fast. Here's the freshman right fielder, Petrie, for the Gamecocks with his five homers and 13 driven in. He walked his only time to the plate, had two hits in last night's game. I'm like you. You've seen now two really good opposite field approaches from the righty. See if we can get one more here to run in scoring position. There's a sharp breaking ball. He so he nubs it maybe off his foot and down towards third base, fielded down there by Blake Wright. Tommy, I want to throw in real quick. A lot of people listening today, Tyler Spear, old Gamecock, told yeah. me even the out-of-staters like this game too. So that was <laughs> – and I had a laugh. He's one of the best. So we do. Anybody gets to be a part of this. Slider is outside and in the dirt in a nice pickup. Tell you what, Engel looks really good back there. He slides over those pitches in a hurry. He's quick. He just moves real quick, almost like an infielder back there catching. Picks a lot of balls but always keeps them right in front of him. Stretch, the look back, pitch on the way, is down low, I guess. Didn't see the monitor that one, but 
Have a little trouble right behind the umpire here, judging the height of those that are around the knees. Two balls and a strike. Petrie looking for long one number six. That one's low and inside, three and one. Cassis on deck. But there are two outs with Messina out there at first base. Excuse me, second base. It's been three hard hit balls this inning, too. Denny's ball was hit as hard as you can hit a ground ball, and obviously Wimmers and then Messina. So kind of the longest outing, obviously, of his career so far. So maybe. There's a foul ball off the catcher's mitt. Look, and he's run it full. I think maybe change up on that one, yeah, which we haven't so. seen many. But 85 on that one just kind of fools you from that 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Now, forget how hard the bullpens are here. I don't know if anybody's throwing or not. I pop up into short right field. Under it out there is Ferry for out number three. So the Gamecocks get a couple of balls hard, but the double play, pitcher's best friend right there. So no runs with two hits, no errors, and one left on base. We have played four, and we are scoreless here in Greenville. We're back after this from Farm Bureau Insurance. Founders Federal Credit Union offers diverse financial products and services to their members to help them relax and stay focused on their financial goals. Not a member of Founders yet? Visit RelaxJoinFounders.com to apply for membership. Noah Hall, 47 pitches through four. He's going to face five, six, and seven for the Tigers with Blackwell, the shortstop, leading things off. He singled back in the second inning, then got picked off. The hits are few and far between. We've only had three in this game, two by Carolina, and they were both back in the their half of the fourth. Yeah, our pickoff, South Carolina's pickoff is kind of like Clemson double play, so it's keeping these pitch counts very, very doable for both head coaches. You'll start to see guys moving around those bullpens, I'm sure, but not needed yet. Fairfax, Virginia, senior Blackwell. There's another guy who can really run. Right-hand batter in the back of that box, even stance. First pitch is down low. Yeah, Clemson 28 to 34 on the bases. And got best, thrown out last <laughs> night. Got thrown out last night, and the best way to keep a team from stealing, don't let them on. And Noah's done that a bunch. Comes a the pitch. There's a line drive into right field for a base hit. Good job by Blackwell that time. Just hitting it where it's pitched. So the Tigers with the leadoff batter on. Uh, I think both of these teams have realized we're going to have to adjust to these pitchers because their stuff's pretty good for both of them. And seen that from both sides now. A lot of just quiet opposite field approach here in the last few at bats. So Blackwell two for two, both of Clemson's hits. Here's Will Taylor. He walked back in the second. Right-handed batter, slightly open stance. Pitch way outside at 77. Kind of see different camera shots of the dugout. And pretty cool to see Coach Jack Leggett standing in that dugout again yeah. at Clemson in his Clemson gear. 
Low and outside, and it's 2-0. and oh. I was fortunate 25 years ago to get to coach in my first one with Coach Tanner. and Gosh, all the coaches that were in that with Coach Leggett and all of them. What an experience to get to have. Pitch on the way, and it's outside at 92, flirting with trouble here. I met Jack Leggett about, gosh, 25 years ago or so at a tennis tournament in Belton. Our daughters were, were playing each other, his daughter Colby. Remember? Pitch on the way, and he bluffs the bunt, takes a strike in there. We were sitting on the bench watching him play and got to talking, and, of course, I had known him from Clemson baseball and had a nice conversation behind the backstop during the Clemson batting practice before the game. Runner going, pitch is sky. That's going to be trouble. Looks like the right fielder, Petri, is going to dive, and he can't make the play. Looks like he lost it in the sun. Tigers are going to have him at second and third. And a long, long wide throw. And a great catch over there by Lee Croy at third base because Petri unloaded that from the right field corner and almost threw it down to the left field corner for the Tigers in business here in the fifth with a single and that's got to be a base hit as well, but nice diving attempt out there by Petri. But it looked like he just kind of lost it because when he went to dive for it, he wasn't close to the ball and then barely got a glove on it. Yeah, and just... We were going to have a visit to the mound. Pitching coach Justin Parker for the Gamecocks. That's another TM Floyd and Company consultation. Yeah, Blackwood broke on the pitch, so it kind of brings your eyes to it. And then Petri still not feeling great out there in right field. He took a hard Landing is one of those where your knee kind of sticks into the outfield, and that was a that was a an odd play there. But Lee Croy might have made the play of it by catching the errant throw because it was a great catch because Blackwell would have scored if that ball gets away at all. And he thought it had gotten away, he did. And then the coach, third base coach, got his attention said, No, don't take off, he's got the ball. Another TM Floyd and Company consultation you want to work with a company that is involved in our local community, support the American Red Cross, Harvard, Harvest Hope Food Bank. Walk for Life, Families Helping Families, and others with T.M. Floyd and company. Conference is over, and Tigers on the verge of taking the lead in this game. They lead the series one game to none. Well, one conference ended, another one began. As Coach Backage called all the base runners in, the hitter, the on-deck hitters. About three more hitters have now walked out to it. I, I, it's a long conference, and you get these. You get you get your offensive timeouts just like you get defensive ones, but it, it's, it's kind of unique to see them right after a pitching visit like this. A little green onions in the background. And, you're and gonna, we're set to go. And Tal Ikro is going to have to be aware. Cassis is going to stay back, I would assume, but it's that third baseman. You're going to kind of have to come with the runner. It's a left-handed hitter in Ferry, but – Coach Back is not afraid to bunt in these situations either, so you're going to have to read it. Noah Hall and Lee Croy would be the only two guys. Well, Cassis comes in a little bit. Pitch on the way is low and inside, and uh, I think they gave they gave Petri an error on that play. Yeah, looking at the board, and I kind of waited because the board's, how they do it, is still kind of out there. Pitch on the way. I mean, about... Destroyed himself diving for that ball. I'm a little surprised about that. That's a ball, and it's 2-0. and oh, So yeah. disaster looming here for the Gamecocks if they can't start getting some outs here in the fifth. But we are scoreless, but two in scoring position. Staying back in the infield. Third, you know, Lee Croy at third's even, but everyone else is back. Line drive, center field, base hit. That's going to score one. That's going to score two. And just that quickly, Clemson has grabbed a 2-0 lead in this ball game. So... And Chad Ferry has done it for the Tigers to put them ahead. Yeah, and we're taught. I mean, Noah's, it's just been a case of them cutting some good swings on some good pitches. It's not been his fault. He's been ahead. He got behind in the one count just last inning. But this has been, again, left-handed hitters and Will Taylor, right-handed hitter, just going early in the count on the fastball. They use that term ambush, and that's what they've done. They have just been swinging early in the count. So the Tigers lead 2-0, and, you know, Noah Hall has been so spectacular this season so far, being roughed up a little bit here. But, you know, when you get down to it, he hasn't pitched badly at all. The Gamecock bats have got to come alive, or this pitching staff is going to be 
yeah. paying the price for it. Well, that's the thing. It's just in these games, you want to score first to just be able to kind of relax, and that's what you're hoping if you're a Gamecock. But Down yeah, low, it's 2-0. Oh. Yeah, give it Clemson. They've stayed aggressive on the bases. They're swinging early in counts. They're bringing the game right now to the Gamecocks. Left-handed batter, Abrams. Better be careful here. Hit one about 460 or 470 last night. There's a line drive in the right field for another base hit. Runner's going to stop at second base. All of a sudden, with Clemson having one hit coming into this fifth frame. Put four in a row. and Yeah, they ruled one of them an error, but I, I, don't, yeah. I don't agree with that. Yeah, I'm happy for Noah when he don't, you know, get punished, but I thought that was a really, really tough play. And for the hitter, Will Taylor, I thought you, you kind of hope those bloops get counted. But you would think a bunt situation here yeah. with, with no outs and, and, you know, Riley Bertram, your nine-hole hitter. But the way they've been running, I, I'm not too sure you don't see something with a run-then-hit type of effort too. Eli Jones is sprinting to the bullpen for the Gamecocks, right-hander, sophomore. Here's Bertram. He's bunting and he got hit. The ball hit him. Boy, the wheels have just come off for Noah Hall. And this is unlike Noah. And the tough thing is Coach Parker's already used his visit. So you use that mm -hmm. visit early because this is un Noah Hall like. And now you're kind of, as you just said, Eli Jones, maybe that's who's up first. Well, he just now got in the bullpen. So this is Noah Hall's. It's his right now, and Cole Messina get to walk out and talk, but Greg Street ain't going to let this last too long either because we all know what you're trying to do. And they have taken the error off the board, so now they've given a double, okay. and I know uh, Will Taylor appreciates that. Uh, so now four consecutive hits and a hit by pitch. Clemson with five hits in this game now, and they had nine last night. They've out, out hit South Carolina in this series 14 to nine. And Gamecocks have one extra base hit. That was Messina's double. Well, use this to your advantage. At least now you got double play in order because if you're thinking the bunt was going to come there. Fouled off the fist for strike one against Engel, the catcher, leading off in the lineup. Petra's still kind of showing. I think that it was the way he went in the ground. He hasn't limped around. You can still see his body language. Nice straight changeup, swung on and missed. Tommy Moody and Coach Stuart Lake here at Floor Field in Greenville. As the Tigers try to win this series today, and they're up 2-0 after winning 5-2 at Doug Kingsmore last night. Pitch on the way. Line drive foul over the first base coach's head. So way out in front of that one. Or you're, you're in the Gamecock dugout, you're thinking strike out here, then double play. Because you're obviously top of the order leadoff guy. So you're trying to trying to get out of here without a run getting in. They've already gotten two in. You, you just don't want to get down too much in these games. It's so hard to come back. Well, especially the way Clemson's pitching. Especially that way. The pitch. There's a slider that did, didn't quite snap off. It's low and outside. Yeah, it's, Greg's giving maybe a little bit on the fastballs away, but, boy, he's pretty good. He don't give away on those breaking balls much. Greg Street, the home plate uh, umpire. Bases are juiced with Tigers. Pitch on the way. There's a bouncer too short. Wimmer's got it. He's going to step on the bag, throw to first in time for a double play. Run will score. And the Tigers now lead this game by a score of 3 to nothing. Now runners... A runner at third base with two outs for Caden Grice. Well, no that, run batted in there. It's about as good as that scenario can go with bases loaded, no outs, and you're top of the order. So, yeah, great job right there. Noah just pound the strike zone, got in the head and the count early to force that, and a good play right there by Wimmer as well. Still a runner at third. Here's the pitch. Slider is a little bit high. Grice kind of peaked back. Probably learned I'm not going to say too much since I have before, but this is a guy, again, you and I both said he's scary if you leave a ball up in this ballpark. Pitch on the way. Check swing. It's called a strike on the outside corner. 
Looked like a two-seamer the way it moved yeah. away from the left-handed batter. It did, 85 on that, definitely his two-seamer. And it kind of serves as a change-up at times, too, as he's been up to 90. What do we have? 97 early in the game. Left-hand batter waits. Change-up in there for a strike. 83 on the gun. It's one ball and two strikes. Well, he hadn't got out of it yet, but, man, you got to tip your hat. Noah's just calm down, realize, hey, there's nobody can even get loose. This is my inning. Minimize it, which is the word he's probably thinking right now. Pitch on the way. Off the end of the bat, flared into left field. Looks like Denny's got a beat on it, and he makes a catch for out number three. But the Tigers have an inning. They break on top in a big way with a single, a double, an RBI, a two RBI single, another single, and a hit by pitch. A double play saved Carolina from total disaster in that inning. So we have played four and a half here at Floor Field in Greenville. Clemson leads it by a score of three to nothing. You can nix household pests today. Call the professionals at Terminix for control over roaches, ants, mosquitoes, and more. Go online to TrustTerminix.com or call 1-800-TERMINIX for a free inspection. Locally owned and operated since 1947. Tristan Smith, the freshman, has been outstanding out there for Clemson. Finishes his warm-up tosses there. He's allowed just two base hits. They both came in the fourth off the bat of Wimmer and Messina, single in a double, but Nothing to show for it. The Gamecocks hit into a double play with one out. Or excuse me, with nobody out in that fourth. Now it's going to be Gavin Cassis, the first baseman, struck out back in the second. Cavis, uh, Cassis, Lee Croy, and Horning. There's a line drive into right field, and it's going to be chased down. Nice sliding catch by Chad Ferry. Boy, he got a jump on that ball. Yes, he did. And that's one of those, man, you can see it cast us too. You hit that ball right on the screws, left on left. And Ferry from 96 High School comes in and makes a really nice slide and catch. And you need, you wanted that leadoff guy on to not only is Noah Hall still in the game, so you won't know to catch his breath. Yeah. So this can't be a seven or eight pitch inning. Lee Croy takes one low at 93. So, uh, you know, if we get a quick out here, I mean, you're going to have to I even see Coach Kingston do a little offensive visit himself to slow this down. High pop-up behind shortstop. Calling for it out there is Blackwell, and he's going to make the catch for out number two. You're right. That's two quick ones. Yeah, I mean, it's three pitches. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm burning one of my timeouts here. Or better yet, if you had a sign, they'd say get some dirt in your eye. Maybe the old something's in my eye trick. Mm -hmm. But three pitches... I mean, it's have to take a strike here if you're Carson, at least. I think so. Up close to that plate from the left side, and he almost hit him. I and think he did. Oh. Said he hit his. Carson said it hit his elbow pad. And here comes Mark Kingston to talk about it with Greg Street. Well, it's he, certainly did he, call, he called it a foul ball, didn't he? Did he throw up both hands like it was a foul ball? He did, well, it definitely. Cooper Ingle took the worst of this. Now we're having a discussion. This is one you can review this year without using a review if the umpire deems it, hey, let's get this right. Um, boy, a lot of conversation going on. It's almost 
tell you if I umpired, I'm saying you want to look at it. And this is what I got. Yeah. But uh, Gamecocks lost their challenge last night. But Carson acted like a guy who got hit. So I, I believed him. and Looked like he got off his elbow to me. And then the catcher really took the brunt of it, like you said. Not, I didn't see how it could get to his bat. Well, it certainly changed angle. I don't know if it's a knob but a Oh, bat it hit something, yeah. Or his elbow guard, but he acted like a guy that he got hit. But either way, this turns out to be great for Gamecocks. At least it slows this down. Yeah. Because the umpires are still trying to figure out, are we going to make him challenge? Are we looking at it? What you got? And in the meantime, Clemson's got um, – Here's Clemson another close-up of it. Jay Deal running out. That I ball's not it, close to his bat, is it? No. Only, uh, the knob – Possibly. It I looked to Cooper me like Engel. it was four inches from the knob when it deflected to the catcher. Cooper Engel will never want to see this replay again. I mean, he mm. definitely took the worst part. But this is a lot of discussion. I'm just, I'm kind of, okay. They're finally, gonna, they decide we're going to, they're going to South Carolina review. So the umpires deemed that mm -hmm. they had saw it good enough. So, again, works out great, honestly, for the Gamecocks because three pitches, you're about to, let him run off the mound in about a minute. Left-hander Jackson Phipps heads to the Carolina bullpen. Our Sansbury look at the bullpen. See better look good with glasses and contacts from Sansbury Eye Center. And, of course, this official review brought to you by Cool Care Heating, Air, Plumbing, and Refrigeration. Schedule an official preventative maintenance, maintenance review with an ACE by visiting coolcarehvac.com today. We have had some lot of discussions in this series off the playing field. Yeah, and it, it, I've told you before, I love video review because early in my career there was none, and you go home so many nights kind of feeling like you got this call or that call against you, but that ball certainly changes direction. Oh, of direction. course. Yeah, it hit his elbow or his, or his pad or whatever, but I don't think that ball came close to the knob of, of the bat. Yeah, I because his arm's in the way. Yeah. Well, we'll see what they decide. Whatever the case, it's three runs, five hits, no errors for Clemson. 0-2-0 for the Gamecocks last night. Tigers won 5-2, out hitting Carolina 9-7. But the difference in the hits, other than those two hits, were the fact that Clemson had a couple of doubles and two home runs. Carolina had all singles. Yeah, this is it's kind of, and I know they will address it at the competition committees, but we're going to have to come up with at least a time limit on these because I'm mm. looking at Tristan Smith's already thrown about seven or eight pitches yeah. trying to kill time. And all these measures to speed up the game. I know. <laughs> They're giving three. him first base. Yeah. Well, he sure acted like a guy that got hit. Yeah, I thought, uh, to me, the review was conclusive. Yes. So with two outs, he's down there, and the bullpen warming up for South Carolina. We are blocked from there from the view. Here's Evan Stone. I know we saw Eli Jones kind of running down in a hurry when the inning was going on, and you saw Jackson Phipps. So with all these lefties, you'd think Phipps might be a guy. Off the outside corner at 85 to Stone. Also saw uh, Kate Austin heading down there. Okay. It's kind of committee now. You're yeah. in this part of the game. Stretch. Pitch on the way. It is high. Still only is that now six pitches thrown this inning, but the time in between them. See if Tristan Smith gets it back in the strike zone here. Pitch on the way. Outside corner for a strike. Whoa. Sorry about that. Maybe it was low. He had about three or four inches of that <laughs> plate, I can tell you. Yeah, he, he walked around a little bit on that one. Oof. You take those, Evan Stone, because. Top of the order on deck. Mm -hmm. Pitch on the way. Is in there for a strike. <laughs> Umpires don't like that, of course. Evan Stone was ready to sprint to first base, <laughs> took about three steps. And Gregory Street said, no, sir, that ball's in there. So three balls and a strike. Might be taking another one. We'll see. Pitch on the way. Right down the middle at 90. I think you have to. 
right there, you know, no more. Than, mm -hmm. No better than Evans been swinging. Yeah, he's and, been really fighting it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Let's see if he can throw three strikes. Got to defend here, though. Pretty good bunter, third baseman way back, but there's, there are two strikes. Pitch up high, not close for ball four. So Horning takes second base. Here's top of the order, McGillis. And Will McGillis in this series is 0 for 7 with three strikeouts. 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a fly out to center. Yeah, I, I don't think you maybe go to bullpen yet, but I'll, I'm not shocked if pitching coach don't come out. Yeah, he's got to be, what, uh, around 70 pitches, I believe, now. Yeah, and he's, he's their pitching coach, Jimmy Bellinger, coming out. To, I'm not sure if he's the one would make a move or – but you're definitely a time to come out and talk. Try to get you some scores on our Seawell scoreboard before too long. It kind of looked – we started so early today compared to a lot of teams around in our league and mm -hmm. the ACC, so hopefully get some scores going here in a second. Hey, Signorama is your one-stop shop to grow your business. They design, print, install, and service all of your signage and graphic solutions needs. You can rely on Matt and his team just as Gamecock Athletics has for many years. Contact your local Columbia independently owned Sinorama today. Tristan Smith now with 68 pitches. And we are set to go. Will McGillis with five homers, eight driven in. Boy, but having a tough pitch. series, but he has yeah. made two spectacular plays on defense today. Yeah, he's been an all star on defense, but you got your chance right now. Right in there for a strike. Looked like a good one to hit. And yeah, McGillis kind of frustrated itself more than the call on that one. You'd, I think he's kind of sitting maybe on a little bit of a breaking ball and you get the fastball. Pitch on the way. Did he go too far? They appeal and they say, no, he didn't. That was a slider down. That was close. Yeah, it was close. And it was kind of, I think he was looking slider first pitch, got fastball, and then you're looking fastball, get slider. So. Oh, not as close as I thought. Side angle view tells us it's yeah. pretty easy appeal call there. Pitch on the way. There's a high drive, but it's got to stay fair. It's way out of here over the monster, but it's going to be out foul by about oh. eight or ten feet. That was off the building way back behind the monster there. Well, he got the one he wanted. He got one la like that last night in a big spot, but he swung right through it and struck out. So frustrating there for McGillis. It's one ball and two strikes. I was hoping he did a Carlton Fisk. He had a chance right down that line to do it. Boy, the third base umpire, Adam Dowdy, was right on it yeah. with his motion. That's easily the longest ball Carolina's hit in this series. There haven't been many. Stretch, pitch on the way, is in the dirt. I think Cooper Ingle got crossed up. He, st he stumbled <laughs> when he, he stopped that ball down low. Yeah, I think he might have been sitting on a slider himself, and the fastball came right at him. Kind of awkward at to see that one on replay, but I think he's going, not what I called. Big pitch here right now. Right-hand batter waits. Here it comes. Slider in the dirt. And it's a full count with Braylon Wimmer on deck. Wimmer's hit the ball hard twice. Well, you get your runners now in motion. You can score on a hit that maybe you wouldn't, but better unless they got to throw across the infield. So that was a big, big pitch right there at 2-2. Two -two. Stretch. Here it comes. And he hit him. So the bases are loaded for Braylon Wimmer. Gamecock fans come alive with their fingers crossed here. Tigers leading 3 0 in the bottom of the fifth. Well, Tommy Coach Backage is coming out. Cooper Engel immediately said he stuck his knee out, which you're not allowed to do. Now, this is reviewable, but you've used two reviews. So I, I just don't think uh -huh. that Greg Street's going to say, yeah, I'll let you get one on me on that one. Conversation still going on. Now it breaks up, and now the umpires are going to talk well, to see if maybe another umpire got a better look at it. Yeah, I just have a hard time saying you. I, I think your just natural reaction when you see that ball running in on you is to what looks like turn in, but you're really just trying to get your knee out of the way. Yeah, I'll tell you, with the way things have gone for Carolina in this series, if they were to reverse this call, they're going to leave him at first base. <laughs> this Gamecock fans would just blow a gasket right here. So the base is loaded for Wimmer. Hit a ball hard in the left center field in the first inning. Was chased down by Will Taylor. 
Then he roped a single into right back in the fourth, but he was a race in a double play hit by Caleb Denny. Well, I think it makes it easy for the umpires, too. That ball was clearly ball four. It wasn't over the plate. He didn't yeah. have his knee over the plate. So I, that's the right call from my viewpoint. Mm -hmm. is let the guy, well, that'll be it, too, for Tristan. UConn, Oklahoma's Braylon Wimmer is going to have to wait a while because it's like we are going to have a call to the bullpen. Well, he pitched so well. Gamecocks only have two hits in this game, for goodness sakes, and we're in the fifth. Yeah, remember this inning, he had three pitches, two outs. So, I mean, immediately the hit by pitch by Hornug, and, and there's just kind of wheels fell off a little bit. James Hicks and Chris Veach have gone to the bullpen, a couple of right-handers. So we'll see who this is come in, coming in for the Tigers. We got freshman Joe Allen, number 29. The Tigers have a lot of young players, that's for sure. Allen, for the season, is making his fifth appearance. That ties for the lead on their staff. No one loss record, but an ERA of 1.69, five and a third innings, only three hits allowed. And seven strikeouts and two walks. Opponents hitting 176 yeah. against the right-hander. And Joe Allen hails from Hampton Falls, New Hampshire. Well, that's up there. That's up there in Jack Leggett country, isn't it? It sure is. Cold weather up there. But he's, he's really, it's, it's kind of neat as you ask people doing our scout reports. He throws a split finger for his changeup. So he's a fastball slider guy like a lot of bullpens are that two pitch guy but he throws the splitter for a change and what that means got that downward drop so tough guy because you just don't see that pitch a lot anymore yeah. but fastball slider guy to match up against Wimmer as we said Wimmer one for two in last night's game Braylon went 0 for four a lot of positives could come out of this for South Carolina is one, obviously, the runs and get you back in it. Two's already happened. Noah Hall gets to sit over there, and I don't think you want him out of this game yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain of his pitch count either, wing check, but it just and, gives him a chance to stay in this game. But, you know, now when you think about it, we we're worried about him going out there too quickly. Now he's been sitting over there for a long time yeah. because of the way this inning yeah. has transpired. So. They might not want him to go back out there. You're right. And in this stadium, there's really nowhere for him to say throw down the line. He hasn't come out of the mm -hmm. dugout to do anything. And there's there's no tunnel. There's no anything to these dugouts. You have to go down the right field line to get to the cages or clubhouses. So he's just been sitting in one of the coldest dugouts in college baseball for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's their 5-2 Clemson. No errors in the game. Really glad they reversed that on on Ethan Petrie on that dive into the, the, the right field dirt there down there near that where the stands jut out. Yeah, me too. That would have been a... He did misjudge it a little bit, but I think a lot of that was losing it in the sun. Yeah. So the right-hander, Allen, from New England. Here comes Wimmer. You hate to be Captain Obvious, but this is the bad yeah. of the game that can, and this could be an at bat of the series as you look back on it Sunday night. Three free passes in this inning, two hit by pitches and a walk. Wimmer waits. Pitch on the way is chopped foul. That one at 92 with the fastball and UConn, Oklahoma native, had a lot of a lot of big hits in his game caught career for sure. A lot of great plays on defense, but he just wants to just bloop one in there right here just to get Carolina on the scoreboard. Yeah, and if you do, you're scoring two runs. Almost a wild pitch. What a save there by Engel with the backhand about five feet out of the batter's box from the uh, left-handed batter's box. Well, Cooper Engel's talented enough to do what most guys aren't. He can use his hands then his body. And by using his hands, he picked that so clean, no chance you're going to try to advance. Way outside, this is a wild pitch, and here comes a throw to the plate, and it's going to be in time. Hit first slide there by Horning. He's I think he got to review it. Didn't get there. I don't think he got there. No, I don't think he did. I thought he was out. 
Yeah, we're going to review it. You got to review a score and play, and the umpires are fine with that, which yeah. means another crazy rule. You got to yell at the team to get back inside the lines. And what a crazy inning we have, half oh, inning we man. have just witnessed. I thought he got him by about uh, about six inches before I, he got to the plate. I did too, and it's a scoring play, so you get a free review. But mm -hmm. boy, that's a tough one. And, and on a wild pitch. Yeah, and, and again, you gotta give well, what we thought was a wild pitch. Yeah, he's so good with his hands. That ball was in the other batter's box. It was clearly a wild pitch, but he's so good at knocking stuff down with his hands. He kept it right. He almost pump faked to the pitcher. He kind of had a weight on. The pitcher to get there to throw it yeah. to him. Now, see, this is, to me, I don't understand this part of the game, uh, the rules. And the ground crew was all ready to manicure the field. They were all out there getting ready. They're going to send them all the way back inside instead of just waiting on the side there, which they do to teams as well. And, and you said it. And we're here. Let's see. We can. Can't see the plate on that no. one, though. You know what else I looked at? I looked at Carson Hornig's reaction, and he looked like that young guy going, because mm -hmm. ah. that, that's the one you do. That's instinct, and he's trying to play the game hard. Boy, Greg Street's right. He had a great view. I don't see how they could possibly overturn this, but like I said, many times, many games. Yeah. I've been wrong lots of times. Well, as you said, too, now we're all about saving time. So this, we sent the ground crew back in. <laughs> this know. is going to take a few minutes because the umpire's – no other reason they have to go about 300 yards to even look at it. I just don't get it. And now Clemson's pitcher can't – he don't know where to throw. Don't throw Noah Hall if he does. As you said, he's already set over here now with all these reviews. That didn't take too long. He is out at home plate. Boy. A killer. So the Gamecocks, in spite of three free passes in the inning, cannot score a run. We have played five here at Floor Field. It's Clemson three and the Gamecocks nothing. We're back after this from Terminix. We have completed five innings here at Floor Field. Clemson leading at 3-0. Hey, the Eagles are coming to Colonial Life Arena with their Hotel California tour on March 30th. For show information and to purchase tickets, visit us online at Ticketmaster.com. And uh, the Gamecocks' best pitcher to date this season and maybe last season as well is back on the mound in Noah Hall. Yeah, as we were saying, 71st pitch coming here. And, boy, he sat over there. You mentioned it. Probably turned into at least 15 minutes and just never came out to throw with all the reviews. But I'd said circle that at bat on Wimmer, and we're going to keep it mm -hmm. circled, even though Wimmer had very little to do with that ending yeah. to that inning. Blake Wright, third baseman up there. Pitch number 71 is inside for ball one. Oh, that ball had some run, a kind of a two-seamer fastball there. Never showed up velocity on our board, but. Pitch is foul back. Looks like he's trying to swat that one to right field. 95 on the gun, so he's not getting tired yet. Well, and I said it one night with you. Thank goodness for netting all the way down the line really? in these parks. Blake Wright. Yeah, Blake Wright has uh, two hits in the series. They were last night. He's 0 for 2 today. Foul ball back again. Kind of a hesitant swing there. 
You mentioned the crowd earlier, man. Is, I don't think there's a seat left or spot on the berm. The ones in orange are happy today so far, and they were celebrating last night. It was a changeup, bounced foul past third base coach's box. Yeah, and we've talked so many times. This series, it certainly doesn't determine the end of your season by it all, but, boy, it creates momentum for you. And Clemson coming in four and four, they were – they understood that, and they're trying to grab it and hang on to it. One-two is a change up down low. Yeah, back when South Carolina won the national championship in 2010, the Tigers had taken two out of three over the Gamecocks in the regular season. So you're asking to, you're asking Coach Leggett's team to go out there and beat one of the best teams in the country three times. That's difficult to do. Swing and a miss. High fastball. He struck him out for a good start for Noah Hall. Here in his sixth inning of work, here's Canarello, the freshman center fielder. Yeah, big, big strikeout by Noah there for no other reason, just to kind of let your guys get back in it because they're frustrated. You can see some body language. That inning ended so strange. Pitch to Canarello is outside. Talk about strange. Clemson's first two batters in this game struck out, and that's only his fourth strikeout. He's gotten Caden Bryce twice, but he is, they've swung early. They just don't really give you that strikeout opportunity. Swing and a miss at a nice straight change at 83. Throw those change ups, you'll get some opportunity. Those are hard to stay on. Ball and a strike. Pitch on the way. Is a swing and a miss. See what, Noah Hall must sit in that dugout and said, I ain't coming out of this game for a while because he has come out a little bit different looking guy on the mound. Pitch on the way, off the fist, hit to Cassis. He's going to have to throw it to Hall, covering and safe. Beat it out there, and I think if Cassis had to do all over again, he would have let McGillis feel that ball and gotten over to cover first because Noah Hall, looks like he got there in time if the throw had been in time, but yeah, I agree with you. And, it, you know, no offense, Noah was trying to get over as quick as he can. but And then you got the other part. Camarillo really runs well. So he sure did there, yes. down the line on you. We know he can chase him down in center field. Yeah. So Clemson now with six hits to Carolina's two. Right-hand batter waits. Blackwell, he shows bunt, takes a strike at 91. And this is one of those, Noah, you, you know you got to work quick to the plate, too, because a guy that can run, and they've showed they will run. So can't be messing around on your time to the plate here. Stretch. Pitch, he's going. Outside, throw down is, looks like he, he, he missed the tag there. That's an outside slide there. And McGillis could not reach him. That's a... Great effort to get to the bag there by Canarella. Yeah, give him a scene of credit. That, that throw made it a lot quicker. Yeah, what I thought, a good slide. thought he was going to get him, but, I boy, that's too. just a great athletic play right there. So the Tigers won in scoring position with one out. Yeah, Cole did all you could do there as a catcher. One ball, one strike, and that was in there for a strike, so one and two. Boy, big right here. After that last half inning, you cannot let them get uh -uh. another run on the board. Got plenty of time to do it, but it's just the whole mental part of it. Here's a pitch. There's a chopper towards short, but cutting in front of him is third baseman Lee Croy. Throws him out. That's a nice play to keep the runner at second base. So good play by Tal there. Two outs for Will Taylor. Yeah, Black will two for two going in. So big hitter to get right there. Don't get the advance the runner. Nice play by Tal. So infield ready to leave their feet here to save that run. Taylor a walk and single, excuse me, a walk, a double, and a run scored. The look back, pitch on the way. Change up is in there for a strike. Well, that change up, it just runs back in. You kind of freeze as a righty because it looks out, and it runs back across the plate on you.
Pitch on the way. Outside corner at 93. No balls and two strikes on Taylor, the Dutch Fork High School product. Cast way off the line at first. Takes away a chance of a kind of a weaker ground ball the way he plays it. Way outside with a fastball there. Petri in. Obviously, this is the play that kind of fell in front a little bit, I guess you could say, of him. So he's in in right field. Back of that right handed batter's box, slightly open stance. Pitch on the way it is low and outside. Canarello be a, any ball that gets through the infield is going to be really tough thinking you're going to throw him out at home. Getting a great secondary lead, but also just a good runner. I have that for 87 pitches from Hall. 2 2 offering. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a high hard one right there. So Noah Hall escapes further damage after the infield hit and the stolen base. So we have played five and a half here in Greenville. Tigers still lead it by a score of three to nothing. Individuals have their own set of conditions for work or play that create special vision requirements. Custom fitting eyewear to your individual needs is Sansbury Eye Center's specialty. So when you got to see, you got to see Sansbury. Joe Allen finishes his warm up tosses, the freshman right hander for the Tigers. It's going to be Wimmer, Denny, and Messina to try to dent this scoreboard. Carolina only two runs in this series so far, and 14 times at bat for the team. Wimmer one for two. Again, the way that Carson, you can never say a guy being hustled. It took a perfect play to still get him. But mm. It's an important inning to just get back in. Swing and a miss. And, and put pressure back on because as you're starting to get in bullpens, I would think South Carolina's got to start considering who they go with next too. Clemson obviously already in theirs. Took a little something off that one. It was high, but it was fouled back by Wimmer. So quickly, 0-2. Oh and, and, and you mentioned, too, a lot of freshmen on both teams in this series. A lot of good freshmen that you expect to get to see for the next few years. Pitch. And he hit him on the knee. Ooh, that had to hurt, uh, hurt really bad because he tried to – you could see him kind of stoop a little bit and, with his knee bent. But we could hear it. It was not a glancing blow. It hit him solidly, and he's limping a little bit. Yeah, it's going to – Coach Kingston kind of trying to find their trainer. Let's – Boy, that hurt me. Yeah. It, I always say a lot. With two strikes, it don't hurt as bad, but that one may have hurt just as bad. That was that right in the knee and the shin area. That's – And Allen kicking himself out there. Yeah, two strike two hit pitch. by pitch. Three hit by pitches to the last – Four batters. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's in their numbers are In a walk. Yeah. We talked about the free bases all years we've done them, but I mean that's our 37th hit by pitch. And you know, it's incredible. Two strike hit by pitch. Great job of women not getting out of the way. Denny takes a change up low. And this is a guy we want up, three hole hitter. I don't think you see women run here. We're not really sure how bad his leg hurt. He might have been deking him. Maybe he's perfect, but 
down three, you don't expect to see too much running. Change up, swung on and missed way out front of that one. Denny has a single and a walk in the series. Single last night. It said, you're going to see the split finger here, which is that downward motion. I'm not too sure that it what he threw Wimmer. Swing and a miss. <clears throat> Jammed him that time. And it just appears with Joe Allen, he's not going to leave anything up. I mean, even the one that ended in, it was a ball, two balls in the dirt. Everything's down. The one two pitch is outside. You were braver than me to call that one that quick. I thought he might give. He's given that outside corner on left handed hitters. Engel a little bit too exaggerated there when he brought it back right. quickly. Yeah. Tells the umpire that you didn't think it was a strike either, catcher. <laughs> exactly. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss with a sinker. And Denny goes down on strikes. And that hurts after a leadoff free pass. Here's Messina, strikeout and a double. Boy, Denny looked like he didn't have a clue against this freshman right-hander. We know what kind of hitter Caleb Denny is. Yeah, that's saying a lot. But I'm telling you, just everything that Joe Allen throws has that downward cut to it. And it gets almost – it frustrates you as a hitter because you want something up. And there goes the runner. Runner going is – Pitch is a strike. Throw down is not in time. Good jump there by Wimmer, one of Carolina's fastest players. Ball popped out of the glove of the second baseman out there, Bertram, but he beat it by just a foot or so. I don't like the foot first slide at second. Brian Roberts years ago taught me go ahead first, but mm -hmm. he beat it, and then the ball dropped, which made it clearly safe. It's a pitch. There's a chopper in the left field for a base hit. Wimmer may be held here. Yes, he will be. The left fielder out there wasn't playing very deep. That's Will Taylor. So first and third for the Gamecocks as Messina has his second hit of the game, a single and a double now. And here's Ethan Petrie, the talented freshman, coming up there. A great chance right now. To either, and you want to tell Ethan, don't think about tying this thing. Think about driving the ball. But great opportunity here to get right back in this game. Noah Hall still sitting in that dugout. We didn't see any hugs or <laughs> handshakes, so I'm sure he's over there ready to come back in. Petri a walk and a fly out to right field. Two good base runners on with Wimmer at third and Messina at first, so it could be something where you can move around a little bit if need be. Hall's on a lot of balls in the dirt, so you got to be ready to advance at least Messina. Right down the middle at 87 on that one. Pinstripes are looking for a hit here. Three nothing Tigers. The 0-1. There's a high drive towards fairly deep center field. Canarella going back. It's drifting. It's drifting, and he drops the ball. So the Gamecocks going to have at least one run in, and down at second base is Ethan Petrie, the freshman, and it's now a three to one ball game, second and third for Carolina. He had to leap for it. I would think it's gonna be a hit. What about you? Yeah, I would think that's certainly a hit. I mean, he, he almost, and that, it would have had to clear the center field to be it, but he went up above the padding. I mean, a really great effort, but, and it made Messina have to hold, so he couldn't run to score on it, but yeah, it's, that's certainly a hit. Ooh, it was in his glove till he hit that wall with his elbow. So Gamecock's making some noise, finally on the scoreboard. Yeah, might have to. We're not sure who's in the bullpen because you can't see anybody. No. This is probably going to be a left, left on left at Coach Backage coming out instead of the pitching coach. So Ethan Petrie now with 14 runs batted in. Yeah, Tommy, he made the call to a bullpen now to get the lefty. With our Sansbury look to the bullpen, see better, look good with glasses and contacts from Sansbury Eye Center. Can't quite make out the number, even with my field glasses here. It's number 39, my glasses are. Thank you, sir. That's me, Ethan Darden. Another Darden, 5'11", 170, as you mentioned, freshman out of Rock Hill, pitched for Northwestern High School. Yeah. 
3-1 Clemson. Hits are 6-3. And the Gamecocks, if nothing else, well, of course they got the run on the board, but that ball that McGillis hit foul, must hit that one well over 400 feet. And that one there, probably about 400 feet as well. So at least they're hitting the ball long now. Last night they didn't threaten the warning, the warning hill, I guess they call it, <laughs> at Doug Kingsmore. Didn't even come close. Still got some wood to chop here. 3-1 three three Tigers. Still no errors in the ball game. Well, this is so big for South Carolina because if you come back in after that heartbreaking last inning, it would have been tough to be going in those last three opportunities with no run. So this is a, so far and could be a really big one with Cassis at the plate. Second, third, Clemson will stay back. You don't come yeah. in with a lead. So got an opportunity to not only just – Cut it to one, maybe tie it, and heck with his power, take the lead here. This uh, series at Floor Field, Floor Field opened in 09. Five wins apiece for these two schools. Gamecocks lead the series at Founders Park 11 to 6. This goes back to that time. Clemson leads the series at Doug Kingsmore overall 55 to 29. Carolina leads the series in regular season neutral site contest since 2010, seven to six. But I think that one last night is going to make that seven to. No, that was not neutral site. That's right. That was a home home field for the Tigers. Clemson won the last game after Carolina won the first two games of the 0-1 series. Clemson won the last game of the series at Doug Kingsmore seven to two. Then in all three Clemson wins last season, Gamecocks scored two runs. And in Clemson win last night, the Gamecocks scored two runs. So this is uh, going back that far. This is the sixth game, and the Gamecocks still have not topped two runs. See if they can do it in this inning here. Yep, got the opportunity right now. Going to be a very similar left-handed pitcher to uh, Tristan Smith. Same kind of set crossfire, which means you kind of step more a little bit at an angle than right down the middle. Let's pause 10 seconds for a station identification. You're listening to Carolina Baseball from Learfield. So here's Gavin Cassis, strikeout and a flyout on a great running catch out there by Ferry in right field. And because of this defensive alignment, you can get a huge lead at third. So you're scoring on any ground ball. They've got three infielders on the right side and the third baseman. I guess you kind of say pseudo shortstop, not quite where he would be, kind of in between short and third. That so. pitch was low so for ball one. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Boy, just totally fooled him there. Didn't come close to making contact. It was outside and low. Just bloop one in there. And now something has gotten his eye. Cassis walked halfway back to the Carolina dugout. Now he's back. Stepping in the box right now. The old bug in the eye is one way to get around these new clock rules because no umpire is going to make you stand in there. That one's With low it. and outside. I'll tell you what, Cooper Engel. He's had a lot of low balls to deal with in this game in the dirt. Yeah, you you talked about Bert Heffernan earlier, just that mm -hmm. he blocks that way, chest over, keeps the ball right there in front of him. But, man, does he have to deal with a lot of balls in the dirt. 2-1 pitch is outside corner at the knees. Well, that's a quality pitch right there, and it's two balls and two strikes. Yeah, for a freshman in this series to come in and make that pitch against Cassis, who's an intimidating-looking hitter at the plate. Pitch on the way. Slider is in the dirt. Another one stopped by Engel back there. And we've gone full here on the verge of loading them up with another ball. Lee Croy waiting in the wings for Carolina. Yeah, so they're infield wise, if he can just put this thing in play anywhere except to the pitcher. And it's high for ball four at 92. So the bases are loaded for Tal Lecroy from just down the road in Belton. Messina's at third. Petri is at second. 
after his long, long double. Cassis at first. Hits are 6-4 Tigers, but they lead in the run column 3-1. Now this is the Gamecocks had bases low last inning, but with two outs and the crowd really didn't get a chance to cheer because it happened on the second pitch. But Gamecock fans now are cheering. Want to stay away from a double play, of course. The pitch is outside corner for a strike. Well, the beauty of this alignment is that Tau can shoot a ball through what is normally the second baseman. Clemson's got their shortstop in the 5-6 hole and second baseman standing on the other side. There's a line drive in the left field for a base hit. It's a 3-2 ball game, and Wingo is going to send him. Here comes a throw. It's way off target. Tal Lecoy has delivered a tying two-run single for South Carolina. Three runs apiece. Cassis is in at second. Lecoy pumping his fist down there at first base, and we got a brand-new ball game, folks. Great job, Coach Wingo sending him and just knowing your runners. Well, a couple more free passes this inning. The game cost, if they were going to win this this baseball game, they had to cash in on those because they they didn't earlier. Yeah, big big clutch hit right there by Tao. So a two-run single. Here's Carson Horning. Was hit by a pitch and struck out. Lefty-lefty matchup again. And you know Hornick wants to redeem himself. He was the runner that got thrown out of the plate. That breaking ball is low. Now you're deep in Clemson's bullpen, and I think Noah Hall is, I think it's still coming back out for the Gamecocks. Check swing. They probably will appeal that, but he did not go around. It's a ball. So control difficulties. For Clemson, and now we're going to have a visit to the mound by Cooper Engel. It's been a wild one. We're only in the sixth. It was one that just quietly for Clemson kind of has gotten away this inning. When you think of what had happened, and you come out and you, again, two strikes, you hit Braylon Wimmer. And it all starts yeah. again for this offense with a hit by pitch. And, and you get the big Caleb Denny strikeout, which you and I think the world of him as a hitter. And since that point, they have not been able to get a hitter out and got a new game, as you said, here in the sixth inning. Greg Street goes out and breaks up the conference. So first and second, one out for Carolina in a 3-3 ball game. 2-0 to Hornung. The look back, pitch on the way, is a little bit inside, or could you see a good look on that one on the monitor? Was it high? Well, I'm not sure where it was. <laughs> Looking at the fans behind home plate, they, a lot of emotion on that one from the people in orange. Pitch is low for ball four. They are loaded again. It's just This is one of them when it rains, it pours in, and I wouldn't be surprised to. I'm going to be really shocked. We've got a pinch hitter. It's going to be Kevin Madden. I'm trying to see if he's been announced yet. All right, now he's in the game. So Clemson kind of, you had to wait. Now Ke he's announced. Kevin Madden transferred last season from Virginia Tech. I'll tell you, I've watched Kevin in several preseason scrimmages. He has really, he's had some big days. I saw him hit three shots for hits in one scrimmage but hadn't gotten a whole lot of opportunities, was the starter at third base most of last season. He is one for six this season, and that was a home run. No, he's a, South Carolina's got some quality guys on that bench, and Kevin Madden is one of them. When you have him to better bring in this situation, a fifth-year senior, it's a, it says a lot about your bench. Yeah. We've been going at it a while, and we're still just in the sixth. Tom, we've got number 15. I'm trying to see who that is. Reed Garris coming in for the Tigers' right-handed pitcher. 5'11", 225, sophomore from Mount Pleasant. Pitched at Wando High School, and he lettered last year. A nice ovation for 
the left-hander as he hits to the dugout. And there goes Greg Street again. He's, he's making that walk again to the top of the mound. Yeah, neither one of us jinxed it, but this game was motoring along until this fifth inning, and now it's kind of breaks are put on as it's reviews and pitching changes, and it is, now Greg's just talking with them. Some good-hearted chatter back and forth with Caden Grice, Tigers' first baseman. Caden Grice. And Smart. Now as, He's telling him you're doing a great job back there. As the late Dizzy Dean would say, and now the players head back to their respectable positions. <laughs> so we'll see. Kevin Madden. He's a right-handed batter. As I mentioned, started a lot of games at third for Carolina last year. Didn't he move? He moved to first base for a late because of injuries. Yeah, he did. Late he in the had season. some. Had some elbow issues that just really limited how he could throw. So moved him over to first. Did a good job over there defensively. He could, whichever they decide to do now would line up because he's not a guy that obviously is going to go in the center field. So I don't know if there will be some type of movement or this may be his only appearance. But he's just a guy that, to me, when I get to be around them, he's a veteran guy. He's in that really good Virginia Tech program, transferred here. Again, it, you never know the result, but if you can turn to a fifth-year senior for a pinch hit, mm -hmm. you, you got to feel pretty good about this. You certainly feel good about the experience, as you alluded to. So the Gamecocks have Cassis now at third. Lee Croy, who got the two RBI single to tie it, he's at second. And Horning with his second free pass in two innings. He is down at first. Gamecocks trying to snap this five-game Clemson winning streak in the series, even though Carolina won the series two games to one two years ago. But slim pickings ever since. And finally, for the first time in six games, they have more than two runs against Clemson. Might as well stop, not stop now, Coach. No, you certainly don't want to if you want to win it. You're going to have to get more. But I think you're right about that. <laughs> but, again, this is a guy at the plate. You just feel good about first base in. Grice is. Ground ball to the corners, they're going to come home, but two in the middle. Here's a stretch. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Now that we lost our video off the scoreboard here. Yeah, kind of, I tried to peek back at the screen, but nothing on there except a, a big SC, which doesn't look bad either, but I'd like to see the velocity if we could. Pitch on the way is almost a wild one, low and outside. I yeah, don't know what's happened to our video board, but so we won't be able to tell you the velocity. See what Cooper Engel. He has had more balls in the dirt than, <laughs> than maybe anybody I've seen this year, and it's just the sixth inning. Righty, righty matchup. Here it comes. Breaking ball is inside. Didn't miss by much. Sure. Didn't miss him by much. Didn't I miss know. a strike by much. Kevin stands up on the plate, and I thought that it almost, as they say, back door kind of hit him. Even stance. Pitch on the way. Fouls it back over our heads. Home run cut makes it two balls and two strikes. Yeah, we still haven't got a you know velocity up on the board, but. That 90, probably 91, you can tell the swing. It's His eyes got big on that fastball up in the zone and just fouled it straight back. That would have. A monster point in this game. Yeah. Base is loaded, 3-3 tie. We're in the sixth. And you're the home team. Out. So, yeah. you know, you're really. There's a chopper to the third baseman. He's going to come home, and he got him. Throw to first is going to be bluffed by the catcher. So that's a big pitch and a big out on the fielder's choice. Third to home for Clemson. Top of the order, Will McGillis. Yeah, that, that two one foul tip, that's the one that Kevin would want to get back because it was always right there in the zone. You're trying to hit a sack fly, get the ball out of the infield. Now we're gonna have a pinch runner tip it for the Gamecocks. Gonna be run running for Madden at you, first base. And you'd see Will, you would assume Will would come on in the game since that was Evan Stone's spot. Right. Give you a switch hitter in the nine hole and a center fielder that can, he can run really well too. Will tip at the freshman. 
So McGillis up there. Was hit by a pitch his last time up. First pitch. Swing and a miss at a slider. I kind of pulled the string on that one to get ahead. And McGillis, he's not going to get out of the way if another hit by pitch is coming, but well, he tried to drive that when the bottom fell out. Pitch on the way. Slider, he hung that one. Swung on and missed. We got our velo back, 85 on that slider. And, well, you got to feel you got lucky right there if you're Clemson on that pitch. Now you'd expect a few more dirt balls if, Boy, if it kind of stays the way it's been. If he gets McGillis, what a tremendous job in relief by the right-hander. Here's a pitch. His fastball down low at 94, so he can bring the gas too. Yeah. Even this Clemson pitching staff, their fastballs are down. They don't really throw a lot of the upper zone fastballs. Everything has got that down angle, and they're hard. Here's a stretch. Pitch on the way. There's a fly ball towards left field, but is it going to carry? And it's a nice catch leaping out there in front of the totals on the monster in left field. That's a nice play by Will Taylor. And, boy, the Tigers got to count their blessings after that inning. But good pitching gets out of it. The Gamecocks are going to strand three, but they do get three big runs to tie it up. So we have played six here at Floor Field. On the west end of Greenville, it's Clemson 3 and Carolina 3. And we're back after this from the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Aflac is pleased to join the University of South Carolina and the Arnold School of Public Health in creating a healthy, active, fit, and fun lifestyle for South Carolina residents. Next time the opportunity presents, get outside and take a walk, even if it's just around the block. You'd be amazed how quickly your steps will add up. Gamecocks have a new pitcher, and that's going to be Southpaw Matthew Becker from Chapin. Let's look at Matthew's numbers for the season thus far. He's only made two appearances. He's pitched three innings. He does have a save. In that one nothing win over Penn. Four strikeouts, one walk, no hits allowed yet this season. And, of course, an ERO, uh, a zero ERA. Matthew Becker, the southpaw, try to hold them where they are. But uh, what's your feeling on this, Coach? Uh, did momentum just switch again when Clemson got out of that because the Gamecocks had all of it on their favor? Yeah, certainly did. And, and you know, still, again, I like this move. Matthew Becker, to me, is just a – on this staff of a really a lot of good pitchers, he may be one of the most elite swing and miss guys. So, and for what he did last year, serving as a starter at times mm -hmm. and long relief, he might he might be a guy that could get you the rest of the way. Or you know, you still got Cade and a lot of good arms. But <clears throat> I think the momentum. I think we're going to see a shift or two again before this one's over because this game means a lot. It means a lot to both teams, and, and just you're not going to see them. Kind of funny, Greg's making him take his. Now he can wear a, a Fitbit watch. This is where I get so mad. You can wear a, a watch that's popping up pitch count, but he had on a a rubber band or something that he's got to take that mm. off. Mm. So, okay, I won't get started on that. But <laughs> I think it, this is going to be dependent on the first couple of hitters here if that momentum. But wow, what a catch by Will Taylor. So you got to feel that they're excited and. Getting in with just now tied. 
Ferry's up there, left-handed batting. Right fielder takes a pitch on the outside corner. Fastball at 93, strike one. Ferry's kind of asking back, but you're going to see a lot of those. He's got a really good running fastball. That one's in there for a strike at 93. Inner half, it looked like. Ferry had that big two RBI single in the fifth inning. Pitch. There's a line drive in the center field for a base hit. He threw him a breaking ball, but he threw it right down the middle. And at 0-2, Ferry has a base hit. Boy, that one hurts the Carolina calls right there. Yeah, because if you can just finish that one off, you you say, all right, guys, let's go. We, we got three innings here to even this series. So that's a location. That's a problem. Yeah, and, and Gamecock inning started the same way when he just had them down and you allow those two strike hits. So a two-strike hit by pitch for Gamecocks. That one, a two-strike hit. Be, least, be careful here. I saw all I want to see from Mr. Abrams last uh, night. He hit one as, about as far as I've seen anybody hit all season. There's a pitch that's high and outside for ball one. Well, he's one sports center play away from being two for two in this game. So, I mean, he is, he's been aggressive. He's swung within the first pitch or two in every at bat. Pitch. In there for a strike at 94. So one ball and one strike with a runner at first, nobody out, in a 3-3 tie in the Clemson seventh. Very bouncing around at first. I don't think he's going to run, but. Breaking ball is outside. Trying to distract, if nothing else, Becker to make him come over some. Boy, this game has had a bushel basket full of big plays on 0-2 counts, hasn't it? Sure has. Breaking ball on the outside corner. I know you and I say a lot at Founders, but you're about to have the advantage to the pitcher for a while with the shadows that are falling across home plate right here. 2-2 two -two pitch. Slider right in there for strike three call. Had him just frozen there. So good job by Becker coming back from a 2-0 count. After a leadoff hit, that's a big strikeout. Here's Riley Bertram, the Second baseman for the Tigers. Each second baseman wearing number six. And Matthew Becker just, he gets the ball and he's on the mound ready to go. Bertram a switch hitter, so he turns around to bat right-handed right -handed against Becker. Throw to first. Well, as much movement as Ferry's done, you almost have to just throw over to see if he was trying to go on the first movement, which he wasn't. But Becker kind of, that quietens it down a little bit when you do that. And he bunts it, and it's a good one. Looks like Becker's going to, and he can't make the play. He kind of kicks it, kicked it over to Cassis, and both Becker and first baseman Cassis said, review that because first baseman Cassis thought he got it before the runner's foot touched the bag. But... To see both of them at the same time, that's very unusual. Yeah, McGillis, too. <laughs> I mean, it was all all three guys that were involved in the play. Wow. Because of Cassis, it's so tall, it almost catch you off guard as a – and he reached with – had his left foot on the base, but he's so tall he still has a, a wing span, I guess you could call it, that most guys don't, so – You better have a side-angle view of that because that what we saw is not going to tell us tell them anything. Here we go. We got a good one right here. Boy, that looks like a tie, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just a. But the way they both reacted. You just. <laughs> That's about as close as I have ever seen right there. Did So was it kicked? I'm trying to think yeah. how it got so quick. I don't know if it hit off his knee. I think uh, I think uh, Becker kicked his, <laughs> maybe kicked his own glove when he couldn't pick it up. Yeah. And that knocked the ball to Cassis. This is about as close a look as we'll ever get right now. I don't think they can reverse that. I really don't. But we'll see. What a big play in this game it would be. Clemson would have first and second with just one out and the top of the order coming up there. First base umpire, Mark Winters, he's, he's just going to go right back. He can go to bed. He's going to be yeah. exhausted. 
from from the close. He's had so many close ones. According to review, he's got them all right because the only one change was the hit by pitch, which he wasn't involved in. So, well, with one out and the bases loaded, Clemson pitching dodged a couple of landmines in the Gamecock six. And Becker is going to be in a peck of trouble here if that call is upheld. First and second, the one out, and Cooper Engel, the catcher, the leadoff batter, coming up. Corner Pantry Berm is now open for single-game tickets at Founders Park for the remainder of the season. For more information and to purchase your tickets, visit thegamecockclub.com and download the Corner Pantry app to save at the pump and in the store. I feel like the. NFL, when did he have control of the ball, I guess is probably what they're asking each other. And and these reviews are done right here in house. Like SEC games, you get to go back to Birmingham and you got people sitting there looking. This is those guys. And he's safe. Just probably too hard to overturn that, I think. Yep. Tommy, is that yes, is that a hit or an error? How do you how do you rule that one? Uh you know what? Because of he made it a very difficult play for Becker. You know, he's a left-handed pitcher, and so he had to reverse himself, go back and try to get it. Yeah. I would give him a base hit on it, but okay. let's see. They don't have an arrow on the board yet. Yeah, now eight hits to five in favor of the Tigers. So it is a hit. Pitch, nice stop by Messina there. Could have been a wild one outside and in the dirt. Yeah, both catchers have done a great job just keeping runners Stationary, because there have been a lot of baseballs thrown in the dirt from both sides. Hancock's looking for a twin killing here. 3-3 three, three in the Clemson seventh. Pitch. Outside corner for a strike. Can you believe as many strange, wild plays we've had in this game, there's not an error on the board? I know. It's It's been amazing as much stuff. We've had, I think, four reviews now. Pitch. Oh, that looked good. Must have been, must have dipped low. Can't see that angle from my vantage point for the, for the knee high and below the knees there. So it's two balls and a strike. As good as Becker is left on left, I'm never shocked if Engel lays a bunt down here. This is a mm -hmm. really hard left on left type guy to face. That's on the outside corner at 94. Matthew brought the velo today. Yes, he did. Two balls, two strikes. First and second for Clemson in a 3-3 game with one out. Yeah, our opening weekend, he hardly had a chance to get in. It got very limited last week. Had to come in in a one nothing game. Pitch. Just missed. Mm. Boy, Messina thought he had him and shrugged his head back. Yeah. We he... got a full count with two on and one out, folks. And young man in the batter's box from the land of the sky, they call Asheville, North Carolina. See, we got to... Got to count if you feel like you can get in motion here. I'm not sure you do, but... Pitch. There's a bouncer towards right field, and it's going to get in there for a base hit. Here comes the throw home, and it's going to be not in time. Great job, Matthew Becker. He just saved the run for the game cost. Backing up the play at home plate, but he just squeezed it in there. He got a piece of the ball, and he didn't strike out. That's huge. Clemson now leads this game 4-3. to three. Boy, that Will Taylor catch up against the green monster out there that kept it 3-3 three to three yeah. is looming large right now. But just like that, Tigers back on top. Well, here's my thing, too. In this, all these left-handed hitters have just had to battle. I'm telling you, Becker's got good stuff. I mean, they have just gotten in there, shortened up. This this isn't a, a Matthew Becker issue. This has just been some hard nose at bats, and now you go infield in. Second and third, you got to. Oof. Breaking this. ball low and outside to Caden Grice. Caden Grice as you and I both talked about, he'll strike out a lot, but boy, when he hits it, he hits it a lot. So it's a tough one for the right side of the infield to be in on him. That one's down the middle for a strike at 93. Gamecocks need a strikeout or a pop-up here or an atom ball to the infield. Right, Cass is backed up a little bit, and I don't blame him. Swing and a miss. High hard one there at 93. This is, a, this is a tough match you, a matchup for Grice, and Becker's frustrated because he's made some good pitches, and they found their way through the bunt. He coming right at him here. Here it comes. Fastball outside 
Two balls and two strikes. And again, that shadow's now from home plate is all the way over it, so it gets really hard to pick up spin if you're a hitter. Second and third. One out. Becker shakes off the sign, and now Cole Messina's going to call time and go out and visit the Chapin sophomore. Coach Parker, too. I, I, you know, you can communicate now from walkie-talkie to the catcher's ear uh, earpiece. Somebody didn't like something because you don't usually see visits on a 2-2 count like this and kind of felt like Becker was in control of this at bat with Grice. So someone saw something they didn't maybe like or mm -hmm. want to tell him, you know, you got the right to shake or he might be saying, hey, yeah. you don't have the right to shake. So that could be getting discussed. And for Greg Street, he's got to walk all the way 60 feet again to get him to break up. We've had a lot of TM Floyd and Company consultations today, brother. And here comes Messina back to the plate. So two balls, two strikes, two on, and just one out. This game could be hanging in the balance for Carolina right here. It's starting to get late. We're in the top of the seventh. Yeah, this is one of those you just fought back from three. You, one is, okay, we can do that, but you don't want to get yourself or you're fighting for two and three more runs again. 2-2 two -two pitch. Off the end of the bat, foul back. Had located that one well off the end of the bat on the outside corner. I like that visit, though. I think it's just when you go out and you see what Matthew Becker's thinking, you're telling him what you're thinking, and and that, that you throw your pitch a lot more confidence when you feel you're in control of it. Pitch fouled out of play to the left side. Well, these fans have been treated to a doozy today. Sure have. Just another great weather day that I know y'all set through some tough weather last night before you could play. This one was almost perfect today. The stretch, the pitch, pick off throw to third, and he almost threw it down the left field line, did Messina. Boy, a good throw might have gotten him. Well, Lee Croy saved two runs a day just by yeah. being athletic. He sure has. And throw earlier, now that one. Count's gone full. All right, Tommy, you're the pitching coach. What are you calling right here? I'm calling uh, slider. Yeah, I agree. You got a base open. That's a, a strikeout pitch for sure. I'm with you. Even stance from the left side, Caden Grice. Pitch on the way. Fastball is high and outside. And the bases are loaded with one out. So a couple of sing three singles in this inning and a walk. Still just one run in, but, boy, they are knocking on the door here for some more. Right-handed batter Blake Wright coming up there. He's 0 for 3. Had two hits in the game last night and two runs scored. We're back to it. This is our next biggest at bat of the game. It seems like we keep having them. Well, 6-4-3 would be nice for the Gamecocks. Got that bat cocked high. Pitch. Fouled off over the roof on the Gamecock side, on the first base side there. You keep finding this one of the only three right handed hitters, I guess Bertram was too. He is switch hitter, so. Here it comes. There's a fly ball down the right field side. It's going to drop in, it's going to roll to the corner. The Tigers are going to have one run in, two runs in, and they'll stop the runner at third base, second and third. He just kind of went the other way, didn't hit it all that hard. Had kind of a big loop to it there, but, boy, and the way Petrie was playing, he was playing shallow, and he was playing straight away right field. He didn't have a chance to get that ball, and Clemson trying to break it open here in the seventh inning. They now lead this game by a score of 6-3. to three. Yeah, to be honest with you, Petri did more than I thought he might better do in that corner because if he doesn't field it clean, another run would have scored. So very good job of him fielding it cleanly, getting it right back in. Got to go infield in again. Yep. Breaking ball is in there for a strike to the talented <clears throat> freshman, Cam Canarella. And Tommy, don't be shot with a safety squeeze here because third base still back a few steps. 
in the dirt, blocked nicely by Messina. Cam Hits are 10 to 5, Tigers. Camarillo, just another good player from Hartsville. Growing up, that, that's just some, some great baseball come out of Hartsville. One ball, one strike. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball is hit to the second base. McGillis is going to come home, but his throw is low. It gets away from Messina. <clears throat> Tigers are going to have him at second and third. So he stops the ball, but he had to get up and try to make a, hur a hurried throw, and he short hopped Messina. So Messina no chance to get the out there, and Clemson now leads this game by a score of 7-3 to three and bidding for more, and there's still just one out. Messina, I want to see this again. It was almost like he thought it was a forced play. He kind of stretched at the plate, I thought. Yeah, no. but it was, a, it was a, in the I, dirt, though. Yeah, it was just he was trying to yeah, – had no chance for Cole on that one. So it's been a big seventh inning for Clemson after the Gamecocks fought all day long to tie it up in the six with their three spot. And that will bring up Benjamin Blackwell, the shortstop. Yeah, again, and you've got to stay here the whole time now because he did such a great job base running. He went straight to second on the throw, so you got to go infield in again. You don't have a double play. If he kind of gets into celebrating at first, you could have had that set up. That one's in the dirt, blocked nicely by Messina. That last play was, was the first error of this game on the throw because a runner advanced. I, mean, I can't see in either bullpen, but I would have to think that Getting kind of close to the end, Pete, you could have Matthew Becker for tomorrow, maybe. Maybe already past that I point, think probably. Maybe past that. Pitch. Foul back. It's just frustrating for him. <laughs> you know, it, he's pitched really well. And they've just battled in their bats, got the big hit down the line. And that's a tough play right there. It's so hard when you go infield in and got to make that strike to the plate. One ball, one strike, one out still. The pitch. Oh, I think he went. Looked like a check swing, and they he didn't appeal. Greg Street just called the strike himself. Boy, Clemson fans did not like that. One ball, two strikes. Learned a long time ago from Coach Tanner. Don't argue when you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if I, I think I'd ease up a little bit right now. That was a, I thought it clearly a check swing. Fastball foul back. Still throwing 94. I'll tell you what, first base umpire Mark Winters, I don't want to yell at him. He's had more bang-bang plays in a big league game today, and videos kind of said he's got them all right. Yeah. It's not an easy job. No. Blackwell waits the pitch. Swing and a miss at a ball in the dirt. Gets away from Messina. Going to throw him out at first base to complete the strikeout. So runners stay at second and third. Tigers up 7-3, to three, and the ninth batter of the inning is Will Taylor. And Will Taylor is the reason, as you've stated, that that, only, that last inning ended with only three runs because he made a really good running catch against the Green Monster. Well, when you consider that that ball is four or five inches higher, three runs are going to score because it's going he's going to be at the wall. It's going to bounce back towards the field to play there. Yep. A monumental play in this game. Pitch on the way. He is in there for a strike. This is at a point. No, it's so easy to say as I sit here, but it's time to stop arguing with the umpire and realize he's calling strikes and battle your bats. You're in crunch time now. The 0 1 swung late, hit it toward the Carolina first base dugout side. Coach Anderson getting one in on the road. Billy can go. He's not a bad runner for a guy his age. <laughs> make sure make sure he hears that one in the replay as I'm joking. So He's Taylor back in there with that open stance back of the box. Don't see too many closed stances anymore, but maybe one or two a team. There's a swing and a miss at a ball in the dirt. Messina thro throws to first to complete the strikeout. And as it turns out, Matthew Becker struck out the side. But in between all the strikeouts, the Tigers get four runs 
And they now have 10 hits in this game to Carolina's five. And looking good again for Clemson. We have played six and a half. And Clemson leads the Gamecocks by a score of seven to three. The Clemson Tigers that brought on another pitcher out of the bullpen is going to be sophomore Rocco Reed. Uh, uh, Southpaw from Greenville Senior High School, which is about 150 yards to our rear here. So Rocco Reed, let's get the numbers on him. This will be his fifth appearance. Six hits in three innings. Three strikeouts, three walks. Opponents are hitting 400 against him. And an ERA of nine. With a four-run lead, they're going to, with maybe not quite the numbers of some of the other pitchers they've thrown, we'll see if he can get the Gamecocks out. He's got a four-run cushion. Only two errors in this game committed by Carolina. Gamecock pitchers have struck out. Let's catch up on that number shortly, but do or die time for South Carolina if they're going to win this series. They've got three cracks left. It's going to be Wimmer, Denny, and Messina to face the left-hander, Rocco Reed. Yeah, this is, hey, you know, if you're Gamecocks, you got nine outs left, so it's certainly a long, long way to go the way this game's going, but you don't want to put any zero up right here after you just battle back, as you said, and to get back in this situation. But, again, Wimmer at the plate, and he starts it a lot for the Gamecocks. Pitch is a strike in there at 93. Foul outside third, quickly 0-2. Wimmer with a hit by pitch, a stolen base. Those both occurred. Back in the sixth, he singled in the fourth and hit a shot that was flagged down in left center in the first. So he looked pretty good at the plate today. Yeah, it's a, it's gotten down in the count quick, as you said, the last time the hit by pitch ignited it all. So I'm sure Rocco Reed's thinking I'm going to stay away here. Fastball high and away. 95 from the southpaw. Hmm. I'm not sure what we were expecting from them, but their bullpen is as a foul ball. For the most part, been pretty good for Clemson, too, coming out. A lot of good left-handers for both teams. I know Becker's number running off that inning feels bad, but that's one of the best lefties, too. Pitch on the way. There's a line drive in the right field for a base hit. Kind of hits the dirt as it was passing the first baseman, Grice, over there, so... Wimmer starts it off again for Carolina by getting on base. He's yeah. done that in the fourth and the sixth and the seventh. Well, what, you know, Wimmer's done so much through his career now. He's such a good two-strike hitter now. He stays on that away pitch. His used to be that slider would be what got him, and now he just stays on it so long. Caleb Denny, lefty-lefty lefty matchup. A hefty cut there. Fouls it back. I'll say one thing for Reed. He's not – he's certainly getting ahead of the hitters. 
There's a high fastball at 95. Boy, that's an easy 95 he throws, isn't it? I'm Looks just so sitting, smooth out there. I know, I know. We say it a lot. Scout said it all. It's just amazing how now 95 just seems almost. Almost hit him with a breaking ball. Normal. I mean, you're coming out of bullpen, and you're the fourth guy, I think, to come out of bullpen. I know it's in more of a situation now of the game, but it does look easy. Pitch on the way. Almost hit him again. That one gets by. Well, that might be a pass ball. Yeah, that well, was, it looked like he was crossed up maybe. Yeah, it did. It's like he almost turned thinking it was a – I don't know what happened. There, I know. So. He, he wasn't going to chase it at uh -huh, first. It was weird. And then Greg Street jumped out of the way. Yeah. And he said, well, I better go get this ball. So it's three and one. So hitters count. Wimmer now at second. And uh, free bases keep you in the ball game. The look back, 3-1 pitch, outside corner at 94. <clears throat> Denny hit into a double play, struck out, and walked in this game. Clemson still in their shifts. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Fastball over the outer half of the plate. And that is a big one when he was down in the count 3-1 with a runner at second base. Well, you got to give Clemson pitchers credit. They have made some big pitches in this series. You do, and not to forget, the third ball was to the backstop. So, I mean, it was a, where it looked like you were about to get that extra base or free base runner again. But the big thing here, though, Wimmer in scoring position, you don't, you don't have to score three this inning or four to tie. You just need to score. Blowing outside to Messina. Because Clemson is going to keep getting after you too, so you need to oh, yeah. you need to get a run on the board here, of at least one. Messina in his last two at bats, double and single, scored a run. There's a chopper out to the shortstop. It bounces off his glove. Now he's going to throw back behind Wimmer. Well, that'll be an error. Messina is so fast, he was going to have to hurry to get him anyway. But I don't know if it, you know, it was such a high chopper, he might have lost that ball in the sun. Yeah, and you're out of position. Don't forget, that's the second baseman standing on the shortstop side of the bag. So I'm sure they probably take ground balls on that side too, but you just find yourself awkward there. So You're first good. and third. Boy, this is the guy you want up your game cock because he seems to get the swings off when you want them. Haven't seen a decision yet. They're going to call an error on the second baseman. Yeah, I thought it was, and I agree with you. He might have beat it out if that play went clean anyway, but just since it hit and bounced out so quick, I agree with that call. One ball to count now on Petrie. Home run cut, fouls it back. So a ball and a strike. Petrie back in the sixth. Drove Canarella, the center fielder, up against the, the wall. Hit it about 400 feet. He leaped for the ball. It popped out of his glove. So it was an RBI double for Petri. Here's a pitch. Just off the outside corner. That didn't miss by much. Get a good look at that one. Yeah, that good eye is what I always said on those when they call them a ball. Good eye. Clemson never stays in a normal defense. They've got their shortstop <laughs> again, pull, second baseman on the shortstop side of the bag. Pitch is up high. It's 3-1 and one to Petri, and Petri's a good right field hitter. Usually when he has two strikes. Yes. Yeah, and I could see him here with this velocity right-handed hitter. And he showed it last time when he drove the ball off of basically the center field fence. I don't think he's thinking pull either, so I could see him shoot one through that hole. 3-1 pitch. He did. That was in the right field for a base hit. Messina is going to stop there at second base. So another run batted in for the freshman, Ethan Petrie, as... Wimmer crosses the plate, and here come the Gamecocks. It's now 7-4, to four, first and second, still just one out. And that's where you're glad if you're Carolina there in that shift. That's a just a room service double play if you're normal defense right there. Great job of hitting. So Carolina waited until the sixth to score. Now they've got four in the sixth and the seventh combined. Hoping for more, here is Cassis, first baseman. Strike out, fly out, walk. There's a wild pitch outside. 
So second and third for Carolina. Tell you again, we don't know what's happening in the bullpens because we can't see in them. But I'd be shocked if there's not a visit coming here soon because the guy at the plate could tie it for sure, but you can definitely – you're back in it now, even though you're still down three right, and they could really be back in it with a base hit. And again, big shift. Second baseman away in right field, shortstop second, so base side. The look back to second, the pitch – is outside corner for a strike at 93. That's great location after what just happened to the left-hander. One ball, one strike, one out, two in scoring position for Carolina trailing. Seven to four, hits are now 10-7, Clemson. Boy, what a save by Cooper Engel, the catcher. He had to go six feet to stop that ball. You can't practice those. <laughs> Man. I mean, that, that's just... Yeah, he's impressed me. He uses his mitt or his hands so well back there, and then he blocks stuff. But that was that was just pure athletic reaction there. I got to dive and catch it. But this infield positioning, it's third base is almost in no man's land. I yeah. don't know what ball he's going to get. Second just, baseman is about 20 feet out on the grass. Yeah, so Cass is here. You could almost, Tommy, you could score two runs here on a routine type of ground ball with this, with your base runners. Lefty-lefty matchup. 2-1 pitch is low and outside. This might be the guy that Rocco Reed has to get to say in this game. See what Rocco Reed has made hard on himself. He's got great stuff, too. Yeah, he does. Cooper Engel just got the call from the dugout, I believe, to take your time, and he's got no problem mm -hmm. with that. That guy's didn't get and he's knocked around. <laughs> will he ever get to the mound? That's a slow, Ooh. that's a slow walk to the top of the hill out there. And the third baseman's going to come in there. Yeah, and you know he's still going to have Cassis. They're not taking him out right now. They're just trying to. Here comes Greg again. He's walking faster than the catcher did. Yes. Well, Greg ain't been Greg's hit street. as much as the catcher has. <laughs> Catch, the catcher was uh, Engel was shaking his right arm to try to get some feeling back in his hand after the last one to hit him. Three balls and a strike to Cassis. Looking for his well, first hit of this series. You only get six visits. I think we got to be getting close to that. Got to be. Ugh. Crazy, crazy game. Stretching the pitch. Is just inside. Boy, that looked, <laughs> that looked good from here. But Cassis walks for the second time in two innings. Bases are loaded. Here comes Lee Croy. Had a big hit that tied it up back in the sixth. Drove in two with a single. I think Cassis, too. He gave that delayed. I'm not going to show you up. I'm going to stand until you make a call. <laughs> that looked like a strike from here. Yeah. And Coach Backage. He's kind of, let's see, I just keeps checking. I guess there's pitching coach on. Well, Gamecocks having a frustrating day. I'm going to stay away from a double play right here. And that's going to do it. Here comes Coach Backage. Let's see if they go to a right-hander or a left-hander here. Or maybe he'll fool us and leave him in. <laughs> well, he would definitely fool us if he leaves them in. Boy, he, this you talk a, about a slow, deliberate walk. Wow. He's just now got to the dirt <laughs> of the pitcher's mound. I think we know where Cooper Engel got his walk from. <laughs> My so goodness. Now, Lee Croy going to go back and visit with the Gamecock dugout. Carson Horning over there waiting in the on-deck circle. There, there goes Greg Street. He's wow. getting his exercise in. Yeah. Greg Street, the umpire, is back out there again. Oh, what a crazy game. And, and again, that's where these – umpires come into play so much because you, you can just tell veteran guys he's not out there rushing. It's a big part of the game. And Greg's keeping the game moving as quick as he can. <laughs> and He's tired too. Well, he's, this one's slow to a crawl, I can tell you. Yeah. We're almost three hours old, and we're still in the seventh. And it gets you too. These guys, Clemson guys got a little better rest than Gamecocks because they won, but still you're – 
short night. You were here stretching at 10 a.m. Yeah. Well, whoever's coming in has got plenty of time to warm up. I guarantee you that. Yes. Let's see if we can get that number. He's got his glove right over it on us. 35, I believe, if my eyes are seeing that right. I believe it is Jay Dill coming in. Dill, I think a, a veteran. Big old guy on this team. Yeah, 6'5", 250. Jay Dill, 1-0 with a 6.14. Nine hits and seven in the third innings. This will be his, he started two games. That was his two appearances. Seven strikeouts, three walks in those seven and a third, 300 opponents average. Now he has allowed two home runs in those seven and a third. His message is clear from Coach Backett right here. It's seven for Clemson. If you're just joining us, Clemson played at three in the fifth after a scoreless tie until that point. Gamecocks matched them with three in their half of the sixth. And the Tigers in this seventh inning scored four. Carolinas got one in so far, and the base is loaded for Tal Lecroy. Yeah, I mean, that pitching change <laughs> right there just took about six minutes or seven minutes, and he hadn't started his warm-up tosses yet. Yeah. Well, when he got in, this game up. <laughs> when he got in, he had to take the watch off of the last pitcher. <laughs> and that's why I was laughing. Greg Street, who's been, who's been standing since the game started, unlike all of me and you. Well, let's give you some Ooh. numbers for Jay Dill. He is from uh, Dayton, Tennessee, and went to the Baylor School. where our good friend Eric Kimmery is coaching football now. 6'5", 250, pretty big boy. Got a chan of Beamer ball going here in the ballpark, and Coach Beamer standing out, nice wave. So Dill, the new pitcher, and Lee Corey's got to feel like he's seen about, well, most Gamecocks seen about four or five guys out there. Tell you what, every game Coach Beamer's at, it's like a football score. So I guess he's here, and time for us to get our seven on the board. So Lee Croy and Horning. Of course, Lee Croy wants to stay out of that double play. The Gamecocks have not had a whole lot of luck today. Boy, a bases loaded shot up against the left field wall with a nice play by Taylor. And when it comes down to it, Clemson's ahead in this series and ahead in this game because they've made more plays than the Gamecocks have. Yeah, this is a just you, you've seen a lot of arms out at Clemson bullpen. So for the Gamecock hitters, you don't get to settle in. Tal has proven time and again he can get that big hit for you, and you're going to need it. One for three today, but two runs batted in. Had two base hits in last night's game at Kingsmore. And a run batted in. Righty righty matchup. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Looked like a high slider. Yeah, it was a. He looked comfortable with it. Most of Clemson's pitchers, as we talked about, have been so down in the zone. That was a, a rare, higher strike. And that one hits his bat as he was standing in the box and got rolled out in front of the plate. But I think it got part of him too. So it's quickly 0 and 2. Yeah, the deal's been kind of reverse of what we've seen all day. He's worked. At least in these first two pitches have been right at the top of the strike zone. It kind of you can see Lee Crow get a little tied up on that one. Now let's see if he tries the heater on him. One out, base is loaded, but 0-2 on towel. Pitch on the way. Fist one back. That one 94 on the gun, so he does have a heater, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, we need one of those watches, and we'd know what's coming. We I know. We real yeah. smart. Boy, in the last four innings or so, Gamecocks must have had 15 base runners or more. There's a foul ball out of play, and it's still 0-2. Yeah, it's just, it seemed like two different games. Those first four innings just motoring along, very few hits for either team, and now these next three have just slowed to a crawl. The stretch. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball is skied towards right field. 
going over there is Ferry. He is going to make the catch barely in fair territory. It's going to be a run for Carolina on the sack fly. So another run batted in for Tal Lecoy. That's four in this series for that young man from Belton. Gamecocks have him now at the corners with two outs trailing seven to five. And that'll bring up Carson Horning, left-hander batter for Carolina. DH today. Well, as I said earlier, you like to get them all back, but now you're back in it. That four runs doesn't seem you're now two runs, so you just feel a lot better. You still got seven outs to go here, but Carson Horning still wanting to, I'm sure, make up for his decision to run earlier. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity to do it. Hit by pitch and walked. They're in the fifth and the sixth. Breaking ball is in there for a strike. Came in the back door with that one. Deep in right field out there is Ferry. And that sun's up, become an issue too. You could tell. That's a nice breaking ball in her half, and he's ahead of another hitter, 0-2. He was battling it on LeCroy's fly ball. I thought it was going to give him some issue at the end, but sun setting right behind the stadium, so those outfielders are looking right into it. Pitch on the way. And high fastball at 97. Ooh. <laughs> A little extra mustard on that one. Yeah, and it stayed, too. It's got some spin rate. That ball never got below his hands. And because of Clemson season, you don't know who they really want their closer to be because they really haven't any save opportunities. I think Tristan Smith may have had their only save yet coming into this. So Time was briefly called, so Cassis could tie his shoe standing on the first base bag. One-two pitch. There's a high drive towards right center field. Let's see if it's going to have enough. It is going to be out of here. It is out of here. Carson Horning has hit a three-run blast down in the count. Hit that ball a country mile. I think it might have gotten off the scoreboard in right center. A three-run blast, and Carolina leads this game by a score of 8-7, to seven. and this place has erupted. Well, Coach, he got all of that one. He got all of that one, and it was uh, probably the first pitch down in the zone, and you've said it, a good hitter that just hadn't had much luck. Well, he just had a lot right there, and that that changes his whole game around now as you grab the lead. That's another corner pantry home run and another $50 to the Gamecocks General Scholarship Fund. Corner Pantry, download the Corner Pantry app to save at the pump and in the store. So we'll tip it with two outs, bottom of the seven, new ball game. Tip it from Stone Mountain, Georgia, 6'1", 170 freshman. Pitch is down low. Well, you get to, you get to see now what Clinton's about because this is a game you felt like they've been in control of. Yeah. They have that four-run inning. Carolina says, well, we'll have a five. That one's down low, 2-0. Oh. Here it comes. In there for a strike at 95. Yeah, that's just one of those you're going to have to catch your breath. Gamecocks, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, 96 down the gut. Gamecock sent nine to the plate in the sixth inning. And this is the eighth batter up here in the seventh. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, blows it by him at 96. With the big blow, Carson Horning, sophomore from Overland Park, Kansas, has parked one. 
off the scoreboard in right center, and the Gamecocks put a five spot on the board in their half of the seventh. So we have played seven. South Carolina leads this game by a score of eight to seven, and we're back after this from Founders Federal Credit Union. Is that Austin? Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Back here at Floor Field, Tigers set to bat in the top of the eighth inning. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Gamecock Baseball on Learfield. Gamecocks have a new right-hander in from the bullpen before you tell you about him. Farm Bureau member policyholders can get free tickets to select Gamecock Baseball games this season. Visit FarmBureauPromise.com to become a member today. Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to support Gamecock Athletics. And Cade Austin, the right-hander from Chapin, has come in to this ball game for South Carolina. Cade's making his fifth appearance. All in relief, four innings, three hits, six strikeouts, no walks, opponents hitting 214 against him. His ERA, though, is 4.50 as he's allowed... A couple of earned runs. First batter he faces is going to be Ferry, the right fielder. Yeah, and he's had a great day so far, two for three. And just now, how does Clemson respond? We saw what South Carolina did, and Clemson kind of allowed some of it with some free passes and different th errors. But first pitch is low. Well, you got your guy on the mound now for South Carolina, veteran in Kate Austin. Outside on a 94-mile-an-hour fastball. Didn't miss by much, and it's 2-0. That was a pretty good pitch. Yep. There's a pitch in there for a strike at 95. I'll tell you about Seawells in just a moment. I'll try to maybe even have us a few scores on that one. Left-hand batter waits. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. 94 over the outside corner, and with that, third baseman Tal LeCroy will go put the shift on. Wimmer's going to stay in his normal shortstop position, but now LeCroy is on the first base side of the second base bag back at the cutout. Here it comes. Down low, and he's gone full. Well, this is Boy, nothing comes <laughs> easy, does it? I'm telling no, you what, you battle all the way back. <laughs> now the Tigers get their shot. Yeah, this is one of those. This, this is really crucial here because this – the leadoff guy has been on so many times to lead to runs. Down low for ball four. Do you believe that? He wasn't this bottom of the lineup for Clemson. They find ways on base. That's his third time on there. They really do. We've had so many base runners in this game for both teams. Oh, brother. Here we go again. Here's Gavin Abrams. Better be careful with this guy. He has a single in three trips was robbed by McGillis out at second base in the third inning, or he would have had another hit. But he hit a bomb last night. You think a bunt situation possibly? I didn't know. Uh, There's a foul ball back. Hefty cut at that 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Yeah, hefty cut, and the runner would have fought to break. I thought he was taking off early in that one. Clemson's been very aggressive with the base runners. <laughs> you come all the way back and score eight runs. <laughs> You walk the leadoff man. Yeah, it drives coaches and fans. Yes, crazy. The pitch, 
Swing and a miss. Boy, that was a two-seamer that just kind of took a little bend away from the left-handed batter on that changeup. That's been the thing. When they swing and miss, it's not close. It's what frustrates you when the, the balls come in. And, and Greg Street's calling a good strike zone, so you're going to have to throw it in there. Here's the stretch. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Another changeup made him look bad on that one. A weak swing. What a big out after a leadoff walk. Kate Austin, the right-hander. Riley Bertram, switch hitting second baseman, will turn around now and bat left-handed again. Against Becker, he hit right. Yeah, I'm a little surprised you didn't see some action there, either with the bun or the runner. So it's almost a time where you're trying to figure out what do you do want to do, because do I want to try to tie this thing up or am I trying to win? Is kind of how you're thinking. Short lead off first. Pitch on the way is low. Well, Lee Croy's obviously thinking or being told to look bunt because he's five, six steps in front of third base on the pitch. So he's thinking there's a chance of a bunt at least. Bertram up there, he is a senior from Zionsville, Indiana. Came from Michigan with Coach Backage. Pitch on the way. Is in there for a strike. 96. We've seen some velocity today. I mean, you've said both, 95, both 96. Both staffs, yeah. yeah. 97, I know, early in the game for Miller Hall. Lead hasn't increased much there at first base. Pitch on the way. Right in there with a strike, 93. Yeah, I think Cade's changeup has got Clemson hitters thinking they're kind of making them doubt themselves. They've taken some really yeah. good fastballs. He might see a changeup here. Yeah, very Kind of shortly, he keeps doing a false break, trying to get a catcher to maybe come out of his stance quick, but hadn't really showed he's going to run. Change up has popped up in short center field, going out as Wimmer. Coming in, though, is Tippett in center. He makes the catch. Had to come a long way for that ball. It was up there a long time. That's a big second out, top of the order now. Cooper Engel, single and a run batted in his last time up. Yep, so we go on the... Flipping the lineup over for the fifth time here. So a lot of it bats. And you hope only a few more of your Gamecock because they're running out of outs with only four left is Clemson. Oh, Cooper Engel. What a day he's had, though, defensively. Left-hand batter, Engel. Pitch on the way. Is a little bit low and inside. Now, to me, this would be an opportunity to see Ferry moving because the worst case, he gets thrown out. You got Cooper Ingle leading off. Best case, he hits one in mm -hmm. that corner. Although we're in a no doubles type outfield play. I mean, we're really deep in the outfield. Down low. Two balls and no strikes. And with the shape of the stadium, mm -hmm. even though you're in a no doubles, your center fielder and left fielder are still relatively shallow because of the way the wall plays. Tell you what. From a Gamecock fan's perspective, long overdue Caden Grice on deck. There's a high pop-up. That one's out in short left field. Looks like Petrie's got a beat on it. He falls down, but he makes the catch. Holy smokes. <laughs> a thrill a minute here at Floor Field, and the side is retired. So the leadoff walk does not hurt. Good job by Kate Austin in relief. We have played seven and a half, and it's South Carolina eight. And Clemson, seven.
Are you looking for a new mortgage? Go to foundersfcu.com slash mortgage today to check out their line of competitive mortgage products. Relax. Hit a home run with a mortgage from Founders. Membership qualification re- required, of course. Terms and conditions apply. Equal housing lender. That's Founders Federal Credit Union. I want to correct my call. I, uh, I know we've seen Denny and, and uh, the freshman Petri both play left field and right field this season, but that was still Denny in left who st- staggered and made that, made that scary out out there, scary for the Gamecock fans, but got the job done, and we go to the bottom of the eighth. Gamecock's badly in need of some insurance against these Clemson Tigers. Going to be the top of the order, Will McGillis. Time to get you a couple scores on that Seawell yeah. scoreboard. Vandy beat Maryland today, 8-7. Uh, Michigan, I'll bring it up because Coach Backage lost today. Tennessee, or Texas Tech 10 7, and Georgia leading Georgia Tech 9 2. 9 to 2 there. Righty righty matchup. Here it comes from Dill. Low and outside. 8 8 and 2 for Carolina. 7 10 and 1 for Clemson. Home run by Carson Horning. Slider is on the outside corner at the knees for strike one. Ball and a strike to McGillis. Looking for his first hit of the series. That one's outside and might have got crossed up. That ball wasn't outside, but about, what, six, eight inches, and Engel didn't catch it. Yeah, he may have reached his limit of how many am I going to pick out of the dirt today. Mm-hmm. Two-one pitch. There's a high pop-up in the short left field. Coming in is Will Taylor. Camps under it, and he makes the catch for out number one. You mentioned the Seawell scores. If you need catering for any sort of event, from tailgating to wedding receptions to reunions, Seawells can take care of you. Visit SeawellsCateringSC.com for more information or call them at 803-771-7385. Boy, Cal Seawell and uh, his brothers, Gary and Robbie and the late Carol Seawell, they have been doing it for a long, <laughs> long time. Swing and a miss at a good slider. Wimmer up there. Always bring up lunch with Lou. You remember those when Coach yeah. Holtz got there, mm-hmm. and they do them at Seawells on Friday. And Coach Tolman and I didn't miss those to go hear him talk. And he hit him. Wimmer has gotten hit again. Let's hope he's okay. Boy, his wrist and his forearm has taken a beating from pitches this season. Boy, just out of the dugout in a hurry is Mark Kingston to check on his Prize shortstop out there who's had such a heck of a career for the Gamecocks. Looks like he keeps on ticking. He's going out to first base and represents a big insurance run, does Braylon Wimmer. Here's uh, Caleb Denny. Yeah, second one in probably within a week that's hit him there. I think I'd be investing in a, one of those shields you put on your hand if I were Wimmer at this point. May have just broke another watch. Well, when you, when you hear that flash, that scares mm. you. Yeah, it does. Anything... And that ham eight bone. And you know, wrist. even if you're an opponent, that scares yes, you. It does. So here's Denny. A couple of strikeouts in the sixth and the seventh inning. Jay Dill, the big righty, pitches, and it's a nice stop again by <laughs> Cooper Engel. He's going to sleep good tonight, isn't he? He sure is. And both of these catchers have caught both games. I'm sure they'll be back in there tomorrow, too. So yeah, it's a. It's a long, quick weekend is how you feel when you're catching. <laughs> one of the count. Wimmer off first with one out. Throw over. And Wimmer loves to steal. Loves to get a good break. Loves to put him in motion with the hit and run. But his lead is not very big. No, he's, he's been perfect on the year, and this is a good time to run. Throw over. Dives back in. Caleb Denny can hit a ball a country mile. We've seen him do it, but only two home runs on the year, which is kind of surprising with all the runs Carolina scored in their first nine games. There's a high drive towards left field. Going back out there is Will Taylor, and it is off the monster, and he falls down, and looks like Braylon Wimmer is going to score. What a big hit to the opposite field by Caleb Denny. The Gamecocks lead this game 9-7. to seven. Ask for insurance, and... Denny delivers from Owasso, Oklahoma. That's that's great base running. Wimmer just read that immediately. 
that that ball's over his head with a huge wall. Even if he feels it clean, he may still score, but just a great job. And then Taylor fell down the center field. I had to come all the way over to get it. Great job. Great base running. So run batted in for Denny, number 19 on the year. Here's Cole Messino, excuse me, Messino, a single and a double, and reached on an air. Pitch on the way. Slow breaking ball in there for a strike. Clemson to go back and kind of kick themselves if this thing turns that way with their bullpen, trying to sort it out. But Gamecocks, Low nine in. runs in the last three innings. Low and away with a breaking ball. Ball and a strike on the Somerville sophomore catcher, Cole Messina. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Boy, totally fooled by that one, about a foot and a half outside and in the dirt. Yeah, that was one of those you kind of committed early. You're thinking of what you think's coming, and then that pitch. Look back, and the pitch. There it is again. He hung that one, but he fouls it back. And just, again, Braylon Wimmer, just great base running. He's hit by a pitch again. <clears throat> There was no no doubt in his mind. He was past second base as that ball was hitting the wall. Pitch on the way. Just missed. It had a lot of the plate. Must have been high. Boy, I'm telling you, we see the side angle view of that one. Might have caught a break on that one. 2-2 two -two pitch. High again. Yeah, the catcher, some, you appreciate it as a catcher when you get the break a little bit. Here's the pitch. There's a high drive. That ball is way back. That ball is going to be off the roof of the building beyond the green monster. Cole Messina has just hit one a country mile, a two-run blast, and South Carolina leads this game by a score of 11 to 7. Oh my goodness, he hit that ball. Off one of those top bricks of the building, the New York Life building beyond the monster and beyond the stands behind the monster. Yeah, Almost made it to the top of the roof. What a blow. Gamecocks lead this one by four. I believe that's what you call a no doubter. <laughs> wow. Oh my. Another corner pantry home run and another $50 to the general scholarship fund of the USC Athletic Department. Got a little, I think some talk down there and the rivalry you expect it, but the umpires kind of picked out a guy. I'm not sure who he's talking to Coach Kingston about. Wow. Since the fourth inning, Messina has a double, a single a run score, reached on an error when he hit the ball really hard. And also now a two-run blast. Pitch is swung on and missed by Dylan Brewer. Now, this is a little odd to me uh, that Dylan Brewer is batting here for Petri. Did I miss something? No. Petri's got us. Yeah, I don't. It's in his last two ball games. Let's hope he's okay. Yeah, I'm trying to spot him up. I could see him going in on defense for him, but I'm I'm with you here kind of maybe just a case of trying to get some. Foul back by here. Brewer. It's now one ball and two strikes with uh, Brewer getting his first hit of the season at Doug Kingsmore last night late in that ball game. Former Clemson Tiger. Uh, some big hits for the Tigers against the Gamecocks last year. Pitch. Strike three call on the outside corner. Brewer didn't like it. Turns and walks back. So now the question is, what is going on with Ethan Petri after his big offensive day? Well, see him, he's right up on the railing with the guy. I think that was just a decision by Coach Kingston to give a guy in the bat pitcher standing right on the railing, sunglasses on his hat. But, you know, the horse isn't out of the barn yet in this one. Yeah. There's a high outside fastball. Yeah, like I said, I, I definitely could have saw that defensive move happening to. Oh, yeah, I could see that. But, yeah. 
Kind of strange. And Gregory Street's talk. I don't know what the problem is here. Yeah, you start. Cassis, <laughs> Cassis back in the box. Start to get late in the game, and everybody <laughs> starts to get tired. This has been a wild game. Yeah, and Greg Street being one of them. I know he's tired as well, so he ain't going to listen to much from anything. Not that there should be much being said. Tigers again employ the shift with Cassis. Count's gone to 3-0. and oh. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle at 94. So we had four innings, and I think we may have had two hits, no runs. Swings late at that one at 93, fouls it over towards the Tigers' dugout. Three balls, two strikes. Carolina leads it 11-7, to seven. hits <laughs> are even at 10, and we are in the bottom of the eighth. There's a shot, one hopper to the second baseman. Just heard from Derek Scott. He lets us know what happened with Petrie because we missed the substitution. So that yep. solves it. Brewer went in for defense for Petrie in the top of the eighth. So we pre appreciate my partner, Derek Scott, for letting us know about that. So out at first base is Cassis. The Gamecocks, a three spot for insurance. We go to the ninth at South Carolina 11 and Clemson 7. We are back after this from the... River Rat Brewery. Since 2002, more than 199,000 lottery-funded scholarships and grants have been awarded to University of South Carolina students. South Carolina Athletics would like to thank the South Carolina Education Lottery for their support of the Gamecocks. New pitcher in for Carolina, Kate Austin, certainly did his job in the bottom of the eighth, but they're turning it over to Chris Veach, junior transfer from Presbyterian, also from Chapin. So we've had all three Chapinians pitch in this game for South Carolina. Certainly Becker have. Becker, and Austin and now Chris Veach. Three more miles to go. The Tigers won't go quietly. Here comes Caden Grice. No, and Veach has been, you know, we saw it last week in the safe situation. That Kind of the same situation. Kate came in, got the out. Veach got the ninth, so not sure it's a, not a safe situation now because of the runs, but it shows you this is the guy South Carolina feels is that, quote, closer right now. First pitch is in there for a strike at 93. Looks like about knee high. And after just one pitch, Tal Lecroy, the third <laughs> baseman, goes into the shift to the other side, to the first base side of second base. Straight change up, swung on and missed. Really hadn't seen that pitch so much from Beats. That mm -mm. was a, I'll give a comment. That was a Kate Austin change up there. That ball really had a lot of run. Pitch on the way. Change up, just missed. Boy, the Gamecock dug out. Thought they were going to fall over the railing down there, all those they were kind of hovering over it right now. Yeah, I don't know how Caden took that pitch either, unless you're just fooled, because that was really, really close. Pitch on the way, way up high. Two two pitch. Strike three call at the knees on the inside corner. Grice didn't like it. 
Gracious and he has call. been tossed out of the game by Greg Street. Boy, what a big break right there. That means Caden Grice ain't playing tomorrow. He knows better than that. You can't draw, and that's what Eric Back mm. is just saying. Come on. Yeah, he was very demonstrative with his bat drawing a line down yeah, there. You can't do that, and you get ejected as a player. You're out in the next game. So there's your two-hole hitter for game three tomorrow going. Can't let your frustration get to that point. You got to think of the team first. Blake Wright, third baseman. Right handed batter takes one a little bit low. Wright, a two RBI hit his last time up. It's one for four. Three hits in this series. A little bit low with a fastball at 96. 11 7 Gamecocks. But still got to get two more outs here. Right-hand batter waits. Must have been high, I guess. It's 3-0. and Pitch on the way. It is way outside for ball four. Last thing you want to do with a four-run lead. Well, it's good to see Carson Horning Hitting the ball again last mm. night and, and today. He had gone into a just a terrible slump for about 10 days. Lost his job in the starting lineup. Yeah. Returned to the lineup in last night's game. And the big bomb today, a three-run shot that gave Carolina the lead. Man, huge. Here's Cantarella. Pitch is a drive towards left center field. I don't know if anybody's going to get that one. They are not. It one hops the wall. Firing it in there, is, in there is Tippett, the center fielder, and the Tigers have him at second and third. Boy, those walks will bite you. That was a drive to the left center field gap by Canarella. What a freshman he is. Yeah, he's fun to watch. And You know, you're talking about, we always say get a bloop to fall, but Carson Horning, that, I mean, clearly the biggest hit of his career to this point in college, but those type hits can really get you to remember, hey, man, I'm a good hitter. I just don't have good numbers. Here's Blackwell, the shortstop. Veach from the stretch. The pitch is high. You know what, Tommy, these Clemson's still trying to win this game for sure, but where this frustrates you as a Gamecock is it gives them energy going into tomorrow yeah. because if you could have just had that clean ninth inning, you've put 11 runs on the board. In there for a strike at 87. <clears throat> Took something off that one. But Kate Austin had pitched really well the last yes. inning. I thought they let him close it out. He did a few times last year. Yeah. Well, the trouble is the time runs on deck now. Yeah. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Blew it by him at 94. Blackwell, a senior. Got a couple of hits in this game. Yeah, you just want to... You want to keep the tying run on the on deck circle. They can't win it from there. High pop up on the infield on the changeup. Looks like Lee Corey is going to make the catch. He falls on the pitching rubber. Boy, you could see that coming because he had to go up that incline, and let's hope he's okay. Boy, Tal's had a good game today. Might have hurt his knee, yeah, the way he is squatting down and stretching those knees. He's a tough cookie. He's going back to third base. Here comes Rory, Rory the trainer. Yeah, that one. I know Tal, he, he's going to have to pull him off the field. He ain't leaving for sure. But I think I said Rory. That's Corey. Corey Barton. Yeah. Came over from the White Sox. He did, yeah, right out of Charlotte with their AAA team. and That'll be one of those you check tomorrow, but I promise you right now he's got enough energy and a different thing. He's staying out there on that field. It, and he, he made that quick, clear to the trainer real quick as well. Here's Will Taylor. Try to keep the Tigers alive. Stretch from Veach. Here it comes. Up high with a changeup. Well, Ringo Starr sang it best in 1971. It don't come easy. Boy, <laughs> nothing comes easy in this game, does it? No, it doesn't. In there for a strike at 86 with another changeup. Three hours and 33 minutes later, it's been a battle for both teams. Comes the pitch. Changeup is high and inside. 
two and one. All right, again, two outs. So you obviously get this one. You get to go home and have a chance to win the series. But if you don't get this one, you got time run coming to the plate. You. And as crazy as this game's been, that's the last thing you want. There's a bouncer to left field for a base hit. That is going to plate one. It's going to plate two. And the Gamecocks now lead only 11 to nine. So what an at-bat there from Will Taylor. Boy, that 27th out is always the hardest. It is in this game. And here comes Chad Ferry, the right fielder. And this guy's had a heck of a day. We got the two RBI single, yeah. another single, a walk, left-handed batter. As we talked about, these bottom three for the Tigers have been really tough to get out all day. <clears throat> First base will be back in cast, as I can see Taylor take this one to kind of at least make you throw across the infield. Pitch on the way is inside. Yeah, kind of what this does too, Tommy, is it makes Beach kind of start to worry about his pitch count again tomorrow if you want to bring him back in in this close the door situation. K to be fine. He'll be a guy who can come back. Matthew Becker, probably a lot of pitches a day. I didn't see a pitch count yet. But, heck, this has been an offensive game anyway, so you, you're worried now just get this out. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Fastball at 94. Might have been off the plate outside an inch or two, but yeah. one ball, one strike. Clemson now out hitting the Gamecocks 12 to 10. Gamecocks lead in score 11 to 9. That's what Ferry kind of turned around the home plate guy and said it was out, and he kind of shook his head mm -hmm. yes too. Pitch on the way, way outside this time. Two and one. Mm. Mr. Abrams is in the on deck circle. He has struck out in the seventh and the eighth, but boy, I'm telling you, he hit one last night. It just came down, I think about an hour ago. Yeah, you don't want him coming up as a winning run. Change up in there for a strike, two balls and two strikes. Shift now put on by Carolina as Lee Croy ambles over there towards the second base position. Well, the Tigers are fighting to the bitter end here. They haven't lost this game yet. Yeah, it's been two teams a day that knew how important this game was. Pitch on the way. They appeal. He did not go around at a high fastball, so we are one ball away from putting two runners on. Well, I thought you might get that one. I kind of watch it. Yeah, good call again. Yeah, good call. Yep, good call. Ferry wanting to lay into one here. Greenwood Jr. Pitch on the way. Is inside for ball four. This game just will not end. So now the tying run is at first base. And here comes Abrams. Austin got him out on a changeup. Last inning, here comes Justin Parker, Gamecock pitching coach. Yeah, this is just, there's not really much you can say here. Let him catch his breath. Kind of remind your infield again to tell him where to throw the ball because you just got to make sure that run, it's really the runner on first is a tying run. The guy here at the plate's a winning run, so just want to keep yourself in order. Situations like this when, uh, you know, in Fenway Park, they have the pesky pole, which is so short, well under 300 feet. Yeah. Well, they got the same kind of pesky pole here. That left-handed batter up there. Holy horrors. I, I don't want to give anybody a, a fit here. <laughs> Boy, these Tigers just hey, this is never been, say die. Gamecocks, too. No, I was going to say, <laughs> both teams today, you could tell we're fighting to – Clemson was fighting to win the series, and South Carolina trying to get it back home to win it tomorrow. Neither team has given in. So you gotta, you got to say that about both of them, however it ends up. And this ending, this half inning began with a strikeout. Yeah, and an Christ. ejection. Yeah. All right, Abrams waits. First pitch. Swing and a miss at a straight changeup at 80. It's a weird with Grice. He throws some pitches that you think he's unhittable, and then it'll he'll kind of lose it. 
the 0 1. Straight change up in there for a strike. It's 0 2. Can you throw three of those in a row? I don't know about that. <laughs> I know you'd like to think he's got to be 95. He's got to be prepared for the heater here. Yeah, have to be. Let's see what happens. The look back, the 0 2 pitch, change up is high. Hmm. Eleven nine Carolina Clemson with the tying run at first base. Another runner at second. One ball, two strikes to Abrams. The pitch. There's a bouncer towards second. McGillis has it. He throws him out, and the Gamecocks have won this game. So a good job of changing speeds really well on Abrams for Gamecock pitching these last really three innings. And South Carolina has won this game by a score of eleven to nine. The big blow, a three-run blast by sophomore from Overland Park, Kansas. Mr. Horning for the Gamecocks is really swinging the bat again yet and uh, really happy for Carson Horning in this ball game because uh, he was really fighting it there for a while, wasn't he? Oh, he was. Just a huge hit, as we talked about. That's one that reminds you again of how good a player you are, but the game winner may not turn out to be exactly what it was, but to us it all felt like it. That was Tremendous comeback win right there and just it was. to finish it off. And the Gamecocks, I mentioned that streak of five straight games against Clemson only scoring two runs. Well, they, they got rid of that one today with 11 runs and a lot of big hits. A big hit off the monster by Caleb Denny to drive in a run for South Carolina. But South Carolina wins it by a score of 11 to 9. And Stuart Lake and I will be back after these messages to talk about it a little further. Welcome back to Floor Field in the west end of Greenville on a beautiful day for baseball and a beautiful result for South Carolina as they fell behind in this game three to nothing in the fifth inning. And then they battled back to tie it in the sixth only to see Clemson answer with four of their own in the seventh, only for Carolina to answer with five of theirs in the bottom half. And then Carolina with three runs in the bottom of the eighth and the Tigers did not go down easy in the ninth as they played two more and they had the go ahead run at the plate when he was retired. So South Carolina wins at 11 to nine. So the Gamecocks now still just the one loss on their worksheet for this season. Clemson goes to five and five for the year. We move to Founders Park tomorrow and Stewart, uh, we're not gonna take anything for granted. Clemson's gonna come ready to play and so is Carolina. Yeah, and, and you and I have been around this one long enough to know we get that, but just impressed today, both teams never gave up. South Carolina, so happy for Carson Horning. What a huge, Huge home run to give you a chance to now be playing for a series tomorrow instead of just to prevent a sweep. So South Carolina wins it 11 to 9. And when we come back, we will uh, begin our Carolina Ford Dealers locker room report. South Carolina wins it 11 to 9. And we'll be back after this from the South Carolina Education Lottery. <laughs> 